winter and fall clothes in for like my summer clothes. So that's the lovely mess you see in the back. So okay. don't mind it too much. <laughs> I'm not going to judge, girly. I'm not going to judge. I am a clutter fiend myself. This only looks nice because this is my like office and nothing lives here. <laughs> so no problemo. Um, I'm going to pull up my YouTube chat, which I don't normally try to pay attention to too much because it distracts me. Mm -hmm. But I just want them to tell me if the volume is off or anything because I can't tell. So you guys, I'll be looking at the chat for you guys to warn me if my volume is off or if you can't hear Merc because I would hate for that to happen. So please let us know if you can't see anything. They say you look cute. Thanks. So, <laughs> there, <laughs> there's that. All right. So I'm going to uh, call you Merc through the conversation. Yes? Yeah, sure. Okay. Or perfect. you can call me RJ too. It RJ? doesn't really matter. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And I'm Brittany. So makes it nice pretty simple. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Um, I appreciated you DMing me. That was nice. Yeah, I mean, I watched, and I mean, I don't want to sound like biased, but obviously, like everyone wants to feel like their side is, you know, fact and true. Yeah. And I, f I felt like the erudite conversation was. It wasn't that I was at all trying to be hostile. I literally, I was, I was so confused. Like it yeah. just automatically felt like the energy had switched and a lot of her fans were like in my chat saying all these terrible things about me mm. a lot of my viewers were trolling me but yeah. I, and when I get really like riled up I don't know if they're trolling or not yeah. and like I get so like over fixated on did I do something wrong and so like to see you kind of like be honest and be unbiased and like like we both did some like things wrong there's both things we could have done differently but it really 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 was very validating for me and very important for me when you said like when I walked away, like you said, that was an amazing boundary. And I think like that, even though outside validation doesn't matter, it feels good to know that people on the outside can see the things I'm learning in my real life and trying to like utilize it as far as like dreaming and like yeah. becoming bigger in the space, I guess you could say. So that I, I appreciate you being honest and it did actually help with a lot. I'm so glad. Well, I actually, just to clarify some things too. So do you have borderline? I do. Okay. I, I have borderline personality. It took me, I don't know. So growing up, I was diagnosed with like bipolar and depressive disorder and anxiety and all these things. And like, it took me, I think I got diagnosed, was it two years ago, last year or something like Congratulations. that? Congratulations. Yeah. I, honestly, because like them, what they were saying, like fits me to a T and like feeling seen. Yeah. It's like, holy it's shit. Finally, I have something that like like you know describes me and I don't feel crazy because yeah. a lot of people say they say oh I understand but unless you have it mm. you don't understand you don't because yeah. I don't want to be this way I don't want but it's like for me the the tagline I use or the phrase is like it's always a reason for the way I behave but not an excuse yeah so like, that's I what I learned to, like, in, I learned that in therapy for my borderline yeah she was like it's yeah, an explanation so, but not an excuse yeah so yeah, yeah. I actually really appreciated that. And I wasn't sure if you were putting down boundaries because you had like learned that in therapy or you had mm -hmm. known, but that was something I learned first and foremost about my borderline mm -hmm. tendencies was to be okay with putting down boundaries. And those boundaries mm -hmm. are for yourself, right? They're for mm -hmm. you to like mm -hmm. orchestrate a safety, um, a safety mechanism really just to say like, I'm not feeling good right now and it's going to make me yeah. become a person I don't want to be. And so yeah. I'm just going to excuse myself. So we're really making it about ourselves in the moment, I think. Um, I didn't know really what borderline was until I got diagnosed. In the same way that I didn't know like where Cro Croatia was until I had to move mm -hmm. here. And then when I found out I had borderline, man, you go on the internet and the internet, internet tells you like you're useless. Like people hate yeah. you. You're nothing. Yeah. And so I'm just really happy to see people kind of spin that narrative into the reality that a lot of us mm -hmm. get better. They say that if you get therapy within two to five years, you can hit remission. Mm -hmm. So there is so much hope for people with borderline. But I thought I saw that displayed in your conversation with Kyla where I felt like, okay, she's putting down boundaries. She's saying what mm -hmm. she needs. She's exiting the situation. Um, and I really liked that. Now I'm curious now that you've gone through that and you've had, you know, a mm -hmm. few days to chill on the subject. Are you and Kyla okay? Uh, you see, I... Being that I am so new to the space, I am slowly but surely learning how it all works. Mm. And I'm trying to balance that with like business, like mindset with yeah. my like personal wants. Yeah. So as of like, I have no personal problems with her whatsoever. I leave everything on the internet. Like if I saw her IRL, I would not have a problem with her at all. Right. But also I don't want things to get out of hand on the internet. Right. Like 
people took our our conversation and ran and I would have people in my chat say like, oh, do you hate her? Like, is there like, I don't like that. And also I don't, I'm just going to be very explicit. I don't like the way she made me feel. Yeah. And so for right now, I think it's the best for me uh, as well as my community that I don't, it's not. And when I say associate, it's just for lack of a better term. It's yeah. it's just best that I don't associate with her right now. I don't, yeah, there's no yeah. ill will. It's just, you know what I mean? It didn't, it didn't rub me the right way. I mean, I go through stuff with streamers all the time. I've been doing this for so long. And it's mm-hmm. at one point you want to say, I want to give you the benefit of the doubt, but I'm not sure mm-hmm. that us together makes sense. And that's mm-hmm. a weird place to be in since, you know, collabs are the reason channels mm-hmm. blow up. Like collabs are so good mm-hmm. for business. Uh, even this is going to be good for business <laughs> in mm-hmm. like a lot of ways. But at the same time, if it's not going to be good for us, I really mm-hmm. think it's smarter to move away. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so I really appreciate you putting down those batteries for yourself. Now, okay, I'm curious because I only know you through that conversation with Kyla. Yeah. Why are you a streamer girl? Like, why are you here in this crazy ass space? Um, so to be honest, um, I, and I want you to know that I'm throughout this entire thing. Like I, I'm, I'm, there's no character. There's all of my answers are going to be me. I'm not trolling. You seem very grounded right now. Yeah, so I, I'm going to be answering as the real life Regan. Um, I think for me, and this was a part of, uh, you know, my whole journey, but I was broken up with in a terrible mm. way and it triggered me. And I knew that because I used to stream on Twitch a little bit and like I streamed for like a week and I got like 585 followers that first week. And then like I just Damn. I stopped. Yeah. And I I don't know, like. I, I got banned for some mm-hmm. shit and so I stopped the streaming and then like when my boyfriend broke up with me I was like well how can I get attention mm. how can I have men lust over me how can I feel how can I get under his skin yeah. oh let me start streaming again so I started streaming which I didn't do it consistently and then I like took like two weeks away from all social media really got out in nature grounded myself was working really heavy with like my therapist and like doing journaling and all that and like trying really hard to just like find that starting point for the real journey you know what I'm saying so I did that and then like I started streaming again but I didn't do it for the same reason I did the previous time yeah. I did it because I noticed that one it kept me structured because I quit my job it was very stressful for me I quit my job so streaming kind of kept me structured it kept me busy um and you know kept me socializing with people and yeah. then I noticed it started to get more like where I was actually enjoying it and now I don't know if you were the same, but like with me, like I always create new hobbies, but I never stick with them. <laughs> like I'm always starting new things. This is the first thing that I have stuck with. I have been streaming consistently since August 7th and I've only had two days off so far. Yeah. And I, I don't know. I feel a fulfillment. Like I like entertaining people. Like yeah. I've always been super like goofy, silly, whatever. But like, this is, I feel like I'm actually doing something. Mm. And I know it's different from like my random hobbies because I've stuck with it. So it's not like one of those, you know, fixations because it's, I'm still going. And it's like, I don't know. I look forward to doing it. I like coming on and like talking to people. And even if there's not that many people there, it's just the fact that I'm there talking to people, being myself, hanging out. We all have fun. Yeah. So yeah, like I said, originally my boyfriend was the re- my, my ex-boyfriend was the reason why I got into it. But now it's the reason, like I'm the reason that I keep doing it, I guess yeah. you could say. No, I, first of all, <laughs> Thanks for your candidness and being honest about like why you started. That's pretty dope. That's mm-hmm. horrible in some ways, but also like yeah. kind of so human. <laughs> like what a human thing to do, bro. And then you come here and then you twist it into actually being beneficial for you. And I think that's really awesome. I don't know about you, but I – I, um, my relationship with this space is like this is my favorite job, but it's still a job, but it is the mm-hmm. coolest job. It is the – yeah. I will take all the bullshit. I'll take all the gossip. I'll take everything because, girl, I got that in my normal jobs anyways. <laughs> yeah. At least in this space, I get to monologue all day and people like to have conversations with me <laughs> and I get opportunities to meet interesting people. And so there's something to be said about like the freedom of this job while still being mm-hmm. constrained. And I know you're – you know, you've only been here for a short time, but I think people consider you kind of controversial – and I wanted yeah. to know, like, why did you become so controversial so quickly? So for me, whether it's, I don't know, I just came up with this idea. My main goal is to entertain people, right? Yeah. So the thought process in my head was, how can I break onto a scene that's already been established for so long? Like, how can I come onto the like streaming side of the internet, make a splash, grab attention, and like get my name out there? Mm-hmm. 
I say the most controversial shit you can think of. Yeah. Now, granted, don't say it I now do believe... and get me banned on YouTube. No. Oh, no. I don't I don't say it. I don't okay. do that. I don't do it anymore. Okay. Originally, like, that was, like... So there's phases of my career. The first okay. phase was being extremely controversial, right? And then you hit him with a 180. Second phase was, like, be over-honest, be super truthful. And now we're in the phase where we combine the two, balance it out, and it's, like, my IRL life and my internet life intermingled. Okay. What was... So how do you... How intentional was it from day one if you were coming on to kind of get back at the boyfriend? Like, at what point what, did it become super intentional? To to get back at my ex, Like, you mean? no, to, to go from controversial to more honest to now settled. It was it was all planned. I, oh, I planned it all. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I That's the thing. People think I'm stupid. People think... <laughs> like, I knew... I know people are using me for content. I know I sound yeah. hypocritical because I do it on purpose. My goal was to be the most hated person on the internet because hate, I think, is a little more passionate than love. Mm. And even though... But I don't think that... Even still, hate is a very strong word. Like, yeah. hate is a very, very strong word. So even yeah. though I, I still don't think people actually hate me, they just like to think that they hate me. I mean, I think that's most of the internet. I think people really do love to hate people. And I, mm-hmm. I think I see this with like H3, H3 or even myself where mm-hmm. we'll talk like mad shit. But obviously, like we don't hate people. We're just like, we'll talk to you. We'll have the conversation. Yeah. But it is kind of fun to have like a person to counter ideas with. And sometimes that yeah. looks like hate. Um but it is also difficult because eventually you're like, okay, can we turn it off and talk? Can we have a conversation? Yeah. And that's the part that I'm still even trying to figure out when I do collabs with people is like, when am I – like, when can I just talk like myself and we can in good faith yeah. assume I'm not like trying to like destroy you or something? Yeah. You know? So how do you balance that out? Because already, you know, you've kind of taken a hiatus from Kyla. I don't know how you're doing with other people. Mm-hmm. But how do you plan to kind of – guard your energy and spoons Mm -hmm. and then keep it keep an appropriate distance with people in terms of like your vulnerability like what's the plan so as far as like my viewers right Mm -hmm. the people who watch me consistently i will be as honest as i want to be like i make girl i'm very explicit (laughs) i talk about everything because at the end of the day we're all human we all go through the same shit like and like it's this like idea that i live by like if we really want to like bring attention to things like why don't we just live through it and like show people that yeah because i think it's important to you know my room's a mess sometimes people's rooms are messy sometimes you have a depression room someday i have a bad day where it's like i just don't feel like getting out of bed sometimes i feel like this some days you know my trauma does come up a little bit but that's okay because change isn't linear you can experience those emotions so that's really what my plan is is to with my audience be as authentic and real as i choose to be which is very very open book now with other streamers i would say that like as far as online relationships goes i i'm very like i get along i'm I'm very like like i'll still joke and stuff like that and i feel like i have less boundaries on the internet now in real life like say like when i go to twitchcon yeah. i it's going to be it's going to be a very interesting experience because i know like sitting here saying one thing is different than how it's actually going to play out there but I, I definitely want to approach it from a business standpoint. Like you're not going for like to meet your buddies. You're not because yeah. you don't know these people. You know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, it is business and it should be treated yeah. as such. So I am very much different in like that sense where it's like I am very guarded. You know, at the end of the day, we all are competing as much as I don't like that. Mm. We, are, we are competing. You know what I'm saying? And I hate to say it and I don't want to be negative. There is some people who don't know the difference between content and real life. And mm, there yeah, are people who will take anything you do and use it for content, which could smear your name, yeah. your whatever, you know. So, like, I think IRL, I'm much more restricted and guarded. Also, because I try to keep um, my personal life that I don't want on the Internet extremely secret, extremely off the Internet. So it's like when you meet someone in real life who's also in the same sphere as you, it's mm-hmm. like it's getting really close to that boundary. So, yeah. you, you know, I just got to keep it up and. I don't know, hope it hope it works and it may not. And even if it doesn't and I do get hurt or something happens, I, I look at everything from a positive point of view and mm-hmm. I always spin it to be a lesson. So Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Okay, I'm curious because I would say Ugh, just because like I've been – I've tried to integrate myself into a lot of communities online. I've had mm-hmm. a really great time and also like a horrible time because you're right. There is always that disconnect between what is real life and what is work and what isn't work and what's mm-hmm. – and also I'm I'm – I'm a pretty blunt person. And at the same time, I try to like let people be people. It's hard. It's a weird balance of like you do you, but also I fucking hate this about you, but like you do you. It's like a weird balance. 
Yeah. Um, I feel like I'm in competition with myself and only myself. I feel like I'm the really? only person who makes content like I make content because mm-hmm. of the things that I talk about. I always feel like when I'm in other people's spaces, I'm obviously the oddball out because even my mm-hmm. audience will point it out like, man, you f- you are so different compared to the people you talk to. Mm-hmm. And I think it's because I've made a concerted effort to make sure I am my greatest competition. Mm-hmm. And I do that also because I don't want my career to be about other people. Yeah. You know, because that way, if anything happens, at least I don't lose my job. Like, because there are so many people who build their careers around other people. It sounds Mm. a little scary to me. Yeah, I agree. I think that's one of the issues that I've had recently. Like, so I, in my mind, I wasn't clout chasing. I know that it comes across that to people like that's completely valid and fair. Um, I think, but in my mind, like it didn't click like that because Mm. I was so new to streaming. Like I was just like, oh, you guys want me to go talk to this person? Whatever. Like, I don't, there's that, I don't know if it's. I don't know what it is, but like, I've never understood the gravity of certain situations like other people do. Like, yeah. I'm always kind of like, I'm always the last one to get the joke, right? It just, it doesn't click. And like, even now, I don't view myself as like a, like a streamer. I view myself as the same person I was when I first started like talking yeah. to nobody, you know what I mean? So it hasn't really clicked in my head. So I don't view it that way. I don't care how many followers you have. I don't care how many subs you got. You are a person to me. And that's not because I'm trying to be like, oh, like, unimpressed but it's just genuinely how my brain works I treat everybody the same you know what I mean and so it's it it's hard being that I did talk to the people I did destiny xqc all those people because you know you do kind of garner that attention from their community so then your community their community watches you Mm -hmm. so I will say like it is hard because they kind of look for certain content but also at the same time like those people can give you a platform and what you do with what they give you is really telling yeah so just because they are fans of them Maybe they stuck around because they like my individual. For sure. Like maybe they like my uniquity. Like, you know what I'm saying? So it is at the end of the day, like as long as the people in my chat are happy and I'm happy and I feel fulfilled, like it doesn't yeah. matter who's watching me, why they're watching me. Like it is what it is. Do you think any of that has to do with your neurodivergency? Because I know my audience is always like, does she have borderline or is it autism? And I'm like, guys, it's borderline. Okay. <laughs> Actually, I was supposed to go for an autism screening and then... <laughs> I need to do I mine guess- just just to do it, honestly. My sibling has autism. I could have it. <laughs> I, I it, Well, it is a spectrum. So right. even if you don't think you have it, you could have... Like me, my whole True. life, I've been living not I thinking I'm normal. Right. But then also, like, I talked to, like, my doctor about it, and I was supposed to go to a screening, and, like, a lot of the things that they were saying was making sense, like, me not understanding people, or people, mm. or me feeling like people don't understand me, or, the right. like, how I view the world. Like, I just grew up thinking I was normal, and that there was something wrong with everybody else, right? Yeah. And, like, I don't know, like, I, a big reason why I'm not wanting to go to the screening is, one, I'm 26 years old now. Yeah. Knowing I have autism, it, it does me no good. Two, I don't want it to shake the foundation of who I am as a person. Sure. Because having that confirmation that you're fucking autistic, like, mm-hmm. I don't, <laughs> you know what I mean? So yeah. it's like, I'm weird. I have weird tics. I, I have, I'm diagnosed with OCD, BPD, ADHD. Mm. Um, so like, I have all these things anyway. So what does one more diagnose? Like, what will it change? Right? You yeah, know yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's so funny. Okay, because my audience asked me that. They're like, why why do you want to get diagnosed? I was like, look, it's not that I want to get diagnosed. It's that I want to know everything about my brain about your, for the yeah, short time yes. I'm on this planet. So I just want to mm-hmm. know everything. And I want to – I already know BPD is considered neurodivergency. Like I know I'm black and white thinking. I know I think differently. But also I think there's something that's common amongst neurodivergence in general, which is the ones who are, I think, introspective, is there is a sense of um, like – just like a desire for justice but also a desire to know like what is true and it's i'm generalizing here totally but it is one of those things where i see it in people where i'm like but you're the one lying so tell the truth Mm -hmm. like i don't Mm -hmm. get it and the thing is like in business you're supposed to lie like when i'm with Mm -hmm. people and doing like businessy stuff it is like clear to me Mm -hmm. that everyone is supposed to lie and it drives me nuts because i'm like i Mm -hmm. don't feel comfortable this one i'm not gonna remember my lie I'm yeah. not going to remember. And two, it feels like so unnecessary when I've made this whole career. I like on average make six figures. Like I don't need to lie. Like I'm chilling. Yeah. But yeah. I understand that if I want to make maybe millions or if I maybe want to be a little mm-hmm. bit more famous, I would have to sort of mm-hmm. like finesse either the audience or the people yeah. I'm collabing with. So I made the decision a long time ago to be a middle class YouTuber. That was like mm-hmm. my decision. If I become like extremely wealthy, cool. But I'm not going yeah. to forego my values to do it. What are mm-hmm. you willing to do to attain your goal? And like, what is that goal? Is it to be famous? Is it to be rich? Mm-hmm. Is it just to be a, a permanent content creator? Like, what is it? So due to me avoiding limiting thoughts, I don't really like to go to the end. 
Mm-hmm. Um, I like to live in the moment. And I think living in the moment allows you to be more like grateful and like aware of the things you already do have. So when you hear me talk or answer answer questions, I'm always going to answer how I am existing in this moment. So right yeah. now in this moment, I have achieved what I want. I have a consistent community. I feel fulfilled. You know, I... I have everything I want. I have everything I need. Granted, I live in a yeah. like a, a shitty house, small bedroom, but like that does not matter. Like that's like yeah. external. Like I, that does not mean like I'm sad or anything. But if I am to say what my next goal is, it's definitely to reach a point where I make enough from streaming that I can do it full time. Nice. And that's hard for me because I'm not the type of person that focuses on the money. Mm. Like sure, money makes streaming easier, but it's like in order to be able to do what you love full time, you do have to somewhat kind of like go after the money because that's yeah. what you need ultimately to quit your full-time job and stream full-time. Yeah. So it's like, it's it's hard. And it's like, especially when there's like certain like boxes placed around you, like mm. you're expected to act this way because you're a female. You're expected to do this because you're a female. You're like, you you can either be a bikini streamer or you can do that. Like, I don't want to follow those guidelines set for me. Yeah, like yeah. They, one of my friends was like, oh, you need to do th-. No, I want to do what I want to do and and that's it and like sure don't get me wrong there's times where i may like dance or like do something like stupid but like i don't ever do it from a sexual manner because my idea is that if you don't want something to be sexualized don't sexualize it yourself be very Mm -hmm. open and honest be very human and then just like show them that it doesn't always have to be sexual and like with my chat sure they make sexual comments but ultimately like i don't have to ever do anything sexually performative because I have desexualized my body. Mm, now, okay, is so, that a part of like a, a sex positive philosophy or a nudist philosophy? Because I, I think you told Kyla sometimes <laughs> you flash your stream. Oh, no, I don't actually flash my stream. Okay, oh. so like I, I do flash my stream, but it's not like out of the blue. I would, like if we have a conversation about like how one tit is bigger than the other, I'll pull up my stream and be like, oh, this sure. tit's smaller than this one. Or like, or if like they ask about my tits and they are like starting to ask too many questions, like, okay, I have boobs. So what? Like they're just boobs. Like calm down. Like I very much try to like make it comedic, but yeah. also like very like n- not stigmatize you. Sure, sure, sure. Kind of get what I'm saying. But why? Like what's the like what's the reasoning? Um, because I just I've always been very disconnected from sex like that. And yes, I think it is very sex positive because like once you are more comfortable with yourself and realize that they are just body parts like you you become yeah. less insecure and totally. then being less insecure makes you more like maybe like if you are with your partner like you're more willing to try things you're more comfortable with yourself you uh, you embrace your sexuality because you're not scared of it yeah yeah no okay I'll tell you something it's because I've been on YouTube so long but only the last like mm-hmm. three four years has it been a full-time job I've always worked multiple jobs and done this full-time okay let me tell you Back in the day, before YouTube changed their policies, I used mm. to like flash the camera or like mm. randomly in a video, I'd be talking about like, because I used to be like a hardcore political feminist, and I'd be like, yeah. "This is how I feel," and I'd be like, "Why?" And then yeah, I yeah. felt so free making those videos, and then YouTube changed their policies and they like private mm. my videos and stuff. But mm-hmm. um, and now I'm naked on OnlyFans, and I hope to be on OnlyFans when I'm 90 years old, and I'm like, saggy tits and everything. Oh. Like I'm very, but oh. I'm very pro nude. Like I've done okay. the naked bike yeah. rides, and I've done naked parades in Seattle, and I've like been naked in public, like. I'm very into all of that stuff. Um, But that comes from like a wanting to like understand the body's a vessel type thing. Mm -hmm. I remember when I went to my first nudist event, I was a virgin and I had never seen a man naked in real life. Like ever, ever, ever. Sheltered? Yeah, sheltered. I was homeschooled. Mm -hmm. I did only two years of public school. Oh, and I grew up Catholic. Oh, <laughs> Dude, Holy shit, I'm sorry. A lot. Whoa, and I was a closeted queer God. kid, which my therapist thinks that's where the borderline comes from, was being denied my identity since I was like eight years uh, old. So yeah. she's like pretty sure that's where it eight comes from. Eight years old is when mine was when kind of my stuff started. Really? Eight years old. I'm yeah, telling you. But, mine, like, yeah. mm-hmm. but you already – yours was yours from the stuff that you mentioned, I think. So – yeah, mine was like from so sexual assault, physical yeah. abuse, like not I'm having sorry. a stable home. Like, no, but that like it's fine. Like, because I don't want to let it have control over my life anymore. And like, Amen. my biggest pet peeve is when like, oh, you're just trauma dumping. You're trauma dumping mm. me. I don't view it as trauma dumping. I view it as being very real and raw about what people go through. And yeah. like, after I talk about it, like, the first time I ever talked about it, like, I had a full on breakdown. Don't care. Like, I cried. Right. I showed real emotion. Like, I was, I felt good. I felt like I'm owning this. I'm not ashamed of it anymore. I'm going to share it. And like, after that stream I had that one night, I can't tell you how many DMs I got from people who are like, holy shit, 
I've never seen someone on the internet be that real about what they've been through and how much it helped me. And like, that wasn't the goal by no means. Like, I'm not sitting here trying to like virtue signal or anything, but like, like the fact that I had people say like, you helped me or like, now I feel more comfortable with what I'm doing. And like, like that honesty, that authenticity is like really treasured in a space like this. I, I don't know. It's like amazing. And in a way it does kind of, um, I guess, conti- like, make me want to keep being vulnerable. Yeah. But, like, I always know that, like, if it's something I don't feel safe sharing or don't feel comfortable, I won't. Yeah. Like, I'm yeah. not going to share something just for that, like, that commodity, which is those feelings, you know what I'm saying? So I think, okay. yeah. So that's interesting because I think one of the things I've always struggled with was I don't want to sensationalize my life because I think mm-hmm. that makes people see you as – more of a freak than you even are. And as much as I'd Mm -hmm. like to like recontextualize my weirdness into like, yeah, I'm a freak, who cares? The reality is like, I don't feel like much of one. I feel like pretty normal, but we've all gone through things. And so I've been really raw and vulnerable myself. And I think I really get invigorated when people are like, Brittany, like this helped me see myself and like make peace with my family and understand my family and myself. Um, And I think that that came from a decision to actually like be kinder to myself and give no, myself easy. a space to be kinder to other people because like we all go through shit and it's a, it's mm-hmm. easier for the people who can say it out loud I think to sometimes get over their shit versus people mm-hmm. who are in denial that they're hurt yeah. and I think that that has been at least my story like when I've denied myself agency to say yeah actually that does hurt me it just mm-hmm. fucks me over more than just saying I'm I, hurt I I definitely I definitely like I I literally concur with what you're saying because like the, like so um d- <sighs> You know, like sh- like inner child, like shadow yeah. shadow work and stuff yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. So I've got the I've got this thing right. So a big part of it is acknowledging the part of you that you've been forced to kind of like shove down, right? Whether it's like your animalistic instincts or like certain behaviors, intrusive thoughts that aren't necessarily like dangerous, yeah, um, stuff like that. Like, and when you first start, it's kind of like you're taking a walk down a long hall. You know the darkness is coming. You're getting closer. You know, it's getting harder. It feels like the door keeps getting further and further away. But when you like are there, like it really open you open that door and it's like really there in your face. Yeah. And I think that that is the like the moment that you decide whether or not you want to stay the same or change your life forever. And it's hard. It's hard to come to terms with who that is. Yeah. But it is necessary. I think the pain is like a catharsis of all the trauma that you've been through throughout your entire life. And it's really what you need to go through in order to make that change. It's like like rising action and like, you know, yeah. you reach the point, the peak, and then it's like the denouement all the way down. Like you're and it's finally like you're healed. You're you're not healed completely because change isn't linear, but like right. you're at this point where it's like you're aware of the problems, you know what you need to do to fix them, and you're actually consistently working on them. So it's like a free fall down because it's it's easy. Once you stop fighting it. It's like you're just being carried along the river. And a lot mm. of people think like like I, I when I watch other people like uh, dissect like my my collabs or like talk about the things I've talked about, they always are like, oh, she blames everything on like spirituality. Mm. And that's I think they are misinterpreting what I'm saying. I am very spiritual, but I also do believe in psychiatric medicine. And I believe that spirituality led me down to the path I'm on. And like, it's allowed me to get help. It's allowed me to stay consistent with my healing. I think it's a part of my journey. And streaming is definitely a part of that because I get, like I said, I get to practice the things I've learned. I, it's made me more confident because self-confidence and like beauty was a big thing I struggle with. Granted, I look made up now, but like, you should see how I pull up to stream <laughs> sometimes. I, I'll roll out of bed and get on the computer. Like, I don't care. That, I'm that's so, streamer mode right there, girl. You are yeah. a streamer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so, I'm so confident in myself. I feel beautiful. And like, yeah. granted, like outside validation doesn't matter, but it does feel good when you see like people call you attractive, even though like you used to like look in the yeah. mirror and want to vomit. Like, it feels yeah. good to know like, holy shit, finally, like. And then when people compliment me, I don't like act weird now. I mean, I still act weird because I'm shy, but like, <laughs> like I, I say, you know, thank you for that compliment. It's okay to accept compliments. It's okay to compliment each other. Like, yeah, I don't know. I'm just in this like bubble right now of like, everything is just coming together. I'm working on myself. I feel beautiful. I feel good. I feel strong. And even when there are bad days or there are like setbacks or like, you know, um, relapses or whatever you may yeah. call them. Yeah. I get through them. I handle them. and. I handle it healthily and I don't immediately run to the other end, which is like, oh my God, I want to, you know, end my life yes, or anything like totally. that. Totally. I know how to handle it. I know how to cope. And I don't know. Like I was talking in my chat while ago, I haven't had a panic attack in I would say almost two months. Congratulations. And I haven't I haven't had like a suicidal thought or ideation or anything in like two months. So that's awesome. That's awesome. Good. It good. really starts somewhere, honestly, because um 
God, since I was like eight years old, you know, you're in mm-hmm. the throes of this just whirlwind of emotions. And I've had unaliving thoughts since I was a kid. Mm-hmm. And I struggled with it till about 30. Like I was 30 years old yeah. when they stopped. And how, sorry for interrupting. Mm-hmm. How old are you now? I'm 34. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Yeah. So I'm four years um, clean <laughs> mm-hmm. of suicidal ideations and borderline splitting. And mm-hmm. um, the one thing I'm still working on is my PTSD. Mm -hmm. which is interesting. So I got triggered twice in the last 12 or 16 months. And so Mm -hmm. I'm like, damn, like every time I think I'm further along, but like you said, it's not linear. And so Mm -hmm. it's like, okay, here we go again, like learning Mm -hmm. this thing about myself. I said yesterday on my stream, you know, I don't know anything that the world doesn't know. I just am able to somehow implement them because it's a need. If I don't implement this change in my life, like I'm gonna die (laughs) you know what I mean I'm not going to have a healthy existence and exist you know relationship with existing and Mm -hmm. so for me it's like a need I have to change so I I want to pose the question to you because a lot of people always ask me this because I created like this very subjective idea of like introspection and like I made a scale Mm -hmm. for it and people always say like do you think people have to be you know have to like hit the goal of the spectrum and i'm like well there is no goal to the spectrum mm-hmm. the goal is like what you have do you think people have to get better or do you think people are allowed their right to not get better okay here's here's my thing everyone is free to make their own decisions regarding their health or whatever right the issue arises when they get so past the point where it's like they aren't even lucid enough to make a decision. But like, who gets to decide that, right? So it's like, the way I believe, yes, people have a right not to change, but they need to deal with the consequences, which are which are people thinking that they're an asshole, right? Like, yeah, yeah. you can be fine, you can be a jerk, you can do this, but people aren't going to like you. And if you allow yourself to be like that and not get help, the problem can grow, which yeah. could lead to harming others, which right. that's when it becomes an issue. If others' people's safety are involved, then yes, you you someone needs to make that decision for you. Or you can be you could go through assisted suicide, which is something I truly mm. believe in. Yeah. And take yourself out of the world before you hurt others. Interesting. It is very complicated because I, I don't know. Okay, actually I should ask you this. Why do you think uh humans got here? Why do you think we're on the earth? Like do you believe in evolution or God or what's your vibe? So like I said, my thoughts right now, currently in the present, I believe that so I don't know if you know anything about like soul pods or like your mission in life and stuff like that. Is that like Star Children? Based- no. Oh God. Okay. <laughs> Never mind. I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> so like soul pods are like, for example, me and you. We were born okay. in the same soul pod because we're having ah. an interaction right now. Okay. Everyone you meet in your life, you were meant to meet for a reason, right? Mm, you just you're not aware okay. of it because it's a different lifetime. Now me and you were two different people in a past mm. life. And we Mm. reincarnate until we serve our life's purpose, which some people, it may be to love yourself more. Maybe it's love others. Maybe we all have this one lesson that we're supposed to learn. And if at the end of of your life, you've learned it, you won't reincarnate, but you'll become like an ascended master or someone like Jesus or like whatever, who has done what they've done. And now they get to live wherever. I don't know. I haven't gotten to that part yet. Yeah. Do you read Dolores Cannon? Do you know who that is? I do know who that is. That's yeah. that elderly lady. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. But I, I've only seen like a little bit of her. I know one of her books because I have a um somebody in my life who recommended um because they're in like that bubble of like uh, mm-hmm. reincarnation bubble. And they told me about her book, Five Lives Remembered. And it's the only book on New Age spirituality I've read. Mm-hmm. And I've read like thousands of books, but I haven't really hopped into that world. Mm-hmm. And one of the things she says is that like there's this um pyramid, I guess, of lives. And every time you come mm-hmm. back, you experience a new thing. And so mm-hmm. I, I'm not going to lie. Sometimes I'm like, you're coming back as grass next time, bro. I feel yeah. it. Like mm-hmm. you haven't learned the lesson, you know. But it is interesting, that idea of having to learn a lesson. Well, we yeah, we all are interconnected. And like you said, somebody could very well come back as the blade of grass. But you got to think about how intricate and beautiful nature actually is. Mm. We look at it as like a blade of grass. But in reality, it is so much more. And just because it looks small to us, the grass, grass is big compared to a bug. So it's all like, it's all very relative. And I don't know, like, I think that once you come from a mindset of like, we're all just one, like, single thing, you you do a lot of things differently. Now, granted, this is how I feel off the internet. Online, I know people are going to say, you're a hypocrite because you treat people like shit. You do this. But I do it from a place of being entertaining. Whether it's it's not people's cup of tea, whether they like it, whether they're not, it's just I'm doing it for entertainment. I know it is wrong. I know it's mean to say. But that's why also, too, I do have, you know, damage control. Like, Mm. for example, if there's someone that I may troll a little bit too hard I will make sure to message them afterwards or like make sure they know what my shtick is before yeah. uh, I talk to them now granted that's in like 
maybe different spheres because like in like this kind of like environment where it's like more talking and more like serious like I don't troll as much I mean I will a little bit but it's more subtle and more meta so sure. people don't really catch on to it but like in a situation like this like I'm definitely as a like I present myself I am yeah so I feel like but that's too like why would I want to waste my time on someone who already has their mind made up like they're gonna dislike me so why would I show them that like why would I let them in on that you already you already dislike me like you I watched your video very non-biased so of course I'm gonna like like be open and honest with you because you you seem very level-headed yeah I don't know it's just like in past conversations they've made their mind up from the beginning Mm -hmm. and nothing I say or like do so of course I'm gonna troll around of course I'm gonna say yeah out of pocket things because no no no. I think that's very girl I think that's very reasonable I'm gonna be Mm -hmm. real with you I can't I yeah like there's a I mean, there's just a moment where you're like, you're not seeing me. So like, why am I, I can't Mm -hmm. make you, I really believe you can't make people see you. People Mm -hmm. will tell me, Brittany, just explain it to me. And I'm like, it doesn't matter, bro. I'm already (laughs) telling you and you're not getting it. Why am I, I can't work this hard for something that's not going to happen. You're either going to get it or you're not going to get it. So I'll tell you this, because I think I, at this point in my life, in this moment of time, Mm -hmm. I believe we're probably like evolved animals on a planet, but it doesn't matter. We're all like living beings sharing like this ecosystem Mm -hmm. and we don't know what we're really doing here. And we're hoping through our belief Mm -hmm. that we have some tangible idea. But ultimately, Mm -hmm. when I think about what my what I'm doing here on the macro, like I'm just here. I'm just doing my thing, yes, being yes, a person. Yes, yes, but on the yes. micro, I'm a YouTuber. I'm a daughter. I'm a queer. I'm Middle Eastern. I'm all mm-hmm. these things that like mm-hmm. go into boxes and people have relationships with those boxes or bubbles. And then we all have these conversations. But yeah, even when I'm on panels, sometimes I'm sitting there like, what am I doing here? And then a big yeah. part of it is that I'm engaging with this bubble in this community that I do like, mm-hmm. but also – it's like, what is this doing for my journey? And I'm hoping it's mm-hmm. giving me tools for future Brittany, right? Because like mm-hmm. she's going to have a moment in time where she's going to look back on this and she's mm-hmm. either going to know these people or not. Like, girl, I think about it all the time. How long am I going to know Kyla? Maybe mm-hmm. till I'm 50, maybe till I'm 40. Mm-hmm. Like I know people come in and out of our lives. We meet them and then we go. Mm-hmm. Though I do think we meet some people and some people I call my inner circle. I'm like, oh, I'm going to know you till I die. Mm-hmm. Like I just feel it. Like I'm going to know you for real. That's how I felt when I yeah. met my husband, like when I met him. I was like, hey, there's something about you. I think yeah. I might know you for my whole life. I just don't know how. Yeah. And yeah, it's yeah. like you get this like feeling. I, you I know? agree. Yeah. Yeah. Um, for, for me, my ex boyfriend. So again, we're back into the like, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know if you know anything about like twin flames and yeah. soulmates and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so the way I feel it, my ex, there was two options. Either he was my twin flame, which was to like, destroy me and then build me back up like teach me who I am because they mirror your the, your behavior right. and then there's a karmic cycle is something that you're meant to go through to kind of like get rid of past like negative karma that you've done to other people and it kind of teaches you lessons as well so it's I'm deciding between the two mm. so that's how I felt about him like he like I felt like instantaneous but then again I did attribute some of my BPD to it I didn't want to just be like oh mm. it's because he's my twin flame no yeah. that's not you got to make sure that your mental is good yeah. and level before you can even think about anything in the spiritual realm because you don't True. know if your mental is playing on that, right? True. And so now, so don't get me wrong. I still get like these thoughts. Like, for example, I do follow spirit numbers. They have guided me this long and I've been doing great. So I'm not going to stop. Um, I will get that confirmation. But if it's like, I get these weird thoughts, like it could be the most like mundane, like, oh, that's a sign girl. No, it's not. You want it to be a sign. You're delusional. Like (laughs) chill out. So like, I'm really in the stage where I'm starting to learn discernment. What is a message versus what is like gobbledygook and like learning, like what is a, you know, intrusive thought versus like psych, psych, psychic energy or like clairvoyance or anything like that. Because I do, I believe in that. I've had ghost experiences. I've, I've heard dead people. Like I've had all that. So I definitely believe in that. Mm. I believe some people do fake it for monetary reasons or whatever, but I I think also people forget how strong their intuition is Mm. and our intuition is dumbed down by technology. Like we use a GPS. You already have an inherent like GPS system to like, it's supposed to lead you where you're supposed to go. Like you don't need these things. And when you, the more you rely on technology, which I do, Granted, I, I'm in a world where we use technology. It's what I love to do. Just because I think it's bad doesn't mean I'm not going to use it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um. So I think that people forget that you have this energy in you already. And you just all you have to do is listen to it because nobody knows what you're supposed to do better than yourself. So yeah. like, you you have all those answers there, whether you're unaware of it, whether you're ignoring it whether you're fighting against it, those mm-hmm. answers are there. So it's funny. I don't. Okay. So like I, I call it like bubble hopping or like being in a bubble. And I think bubbles are good. I think bubbles, we make our own. Like I always say, I made the best bubble for myself. And like my parents made their best bubble and I rebelled from their bubble and made my own bubble. And then the mm-hmm. world has bubbles. And like 
a bubble is like a shared reality or an idea or a belief. So I don't really believe in ghosts or magic. Mm -hmm. But when I have an inkling, I call my friends. I'm like, hey, what's this mean in your world? Like, what's this like Mm -hmm. sensation? Or I call my mom and I say, hey, like, Mm -hmm. if I was still Catholic, like, what would this mean? And she's like, oh, it's a sign Mm -hmm. from God to do this. Like, what Mm -hmm. I'm seeking is the wisdom everyone must have in their own world with their own Mm -hmm. language. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And I just want to adapt it into my world with my language. What do you think about that? well, foundationally, it's the same thing, right? Yeah. So let's take like my spirituality versus like Christianity or Catholicism. The whole idea is to be a good person. Yeah. Like that's the, like, you know what I mean? It's just yeah. like, you're saying it a different way. Like whether it's Islam, whether it's, you know, Judaism, whether it's this way, foundationally, love others, yeah. love yourself mm. and that's it. Exactly. So, like, and, and that's just one way to oversimplify it. But like, I don't know. It's just, I think that, and this is when I get into my little conspiracy theory shit. Like, I think that like religion really is a form of control, right? They mm. created all these religions to divide us, to cause conflict because like a nation divided cannot stand. Sure. So like, that's how I view it. And I, I feel like if people would just kind of drop all the labels, all the religions and just be humans, which is like the gist of my spirituality is that we're all just positive energy, well, not positive energy, but energy, raw <laughs> energy, raw, yeah. like this is humanity. Like it's just, yeah. it is what it is. If we could drop all of that, but are we going to do it? No. Cause why ego? The okay. Ego is our here, worst enemy. Here, I'll give you a counter because look, I, I think even if we didn't have religion, we just have mm-hmm. other things because we're people. Like no. I think humans okay. are going to human, right? That's like my slogan. Yeah. Like humans are going to yeah. human. And it's not me exempting bad behavior. It's me saying, mm-hmm. okay, Brittany, radically accept. Like this is a person doing what is natural to them. Yeah. And it makes yeah. you upset. But like this is their journey. And then how do you yeah. decide to have boundaries around their <laughs> – around, you know, interacting gotcha. with their journey? But like that's the problem is I think no matter what we do – even if we were all quote unquote awakened or enlightened, mm-hmm. we'd all have mm-hmm. babies and those babies would have to then go on a journey and then yeah. they would decide like, hey, do I want to be racist or homophobic? Mm-hmm. And then you have to retrain those humans to be like more yeah. accepting and loving or like think about your family and friends. Like mm-hmm. why can't we make peace? Like why can't you and Kyla get along if we're just like positive energies? It's like, mm-hmm. well, because there's like this human part of us that is so in yeah. turmoil with ourselves that we flick it onto others, right? Mm-hmm. I think that I agree with your statement for Mm. sure. I feel like it is like, not like a contradiction, but they do battle each other, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're all humans, but yet you still got to hold humans accountable. True. And I think for me, like I said, I, if I wasn't paying attention to those two aspects, I think I would have like problems with her IRL. I do recognize that she's a human, but also I do have boundaries. So I'm like Mm. appreciating the two by removing myself from her online presence, but leaving that door open for real life and who knows maybe later on down the road we do have a positive human interaction off the internet which makes it easier to kind of like move on from whatever we have on the internet because to be honest it's not even a bad thing it's just that i don't i don't feel happy with how it ended and just like i'm sure she wasn't happy you know what i mean like she was very emotionally upset about it so like we both we both are affected by it it's fair to say that like and people who say you can't show emotion fuck you like you're wrong totally um So, like I said, it's I appreciate both of those sides. And for me, like, I really I really do try to be in the center. But sometimes it's like I'd rather be on both sides and have them contradict each other than be center. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I, you know, I always say like um, like five on my level system is like Mm -hmm. the the part where you're like balanced with the micro and the macro. Mm -hmm. And then a two is where you're mostly in the micro or like totally in the micro. And I always Mm -hmm. say like I'm having a two moment and listen to me right now. I'm in the moment. I can't think of myself as an energy in the universe. Mm -hmm. I'm upset and I I want to be upset yeah, so yeah, I can like move yeah. through my feelings about it because I am well, part a human of, and I'm not perfect, you know? Well, yeah, I think that's definitely a part of being like we said, humans are going to human that human energy is is manifesting through emotion. And so yeah. it's like it doesn't, it doesn't even have to be a bad thing. I mean, I, I don't know, like everything happens for a reason. And I know people hate that. And <laughs> I just I feel like I don't know. I yeah. just, I'm in this like flow state where it's like everything makes sense to me. And I just I don't know. I try. I, I really do really do try to understand people. And it's just hard because sometimes I don't understand people. And then yeah. I just I get frustrated because people don't understand me. Mm. And like when I get like really aggravated or like really animated or like yell like yelling, like I'm not yelling because like I'm at, like aggressive. I'm yelling because like I'm so confused. You know what I'm saying? And that was yeah. like a big part like on on that stream. It was like you, well, you don't have to yell. It's not that I'm yelling. It's like I'm trying to just talk to you. And it's like everything's like building up and I have all these thoughts and it's like I'm confused. And once that like foundation is like shaky, it's like 
am I crazy? I start doubting myself. I start yeah. looking for external doubt. It's like, it's just like you're thrown into this turmoil. And I've never, I don't like feeling that way because then it kind of reminds me, it's like, well, now am I relapsing? Is all that, all that progress, like, am I, am I fucking up? And it's like, it's just so many things like, and all these negative emotions and thoughts come running through and it's like, you're doubting yourself. Mm. So I don't know. That's, that's really all it was. Like, I don't want people to think I'm hostile at all. Yeah. Granted my behavior, some of the time does come across as hostile, but that's like a part of the bit. That's like the character right. or whatever. But it's like, when I'm talking like this, I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm just like, you know, Animated. I'm passionate. Yeah. yeah. I'm passionate. So like, I don't yeah. ever want to come across as hostile. And like that, I think if we're not like hiding it or like masking, like her title, like she gets murked and like ho hostile out of nowhere. Like that's what made me kind of like, you really said that? Like, mm -hmm. why would you like, it kind of painted me to be a bad person, which yeah, granted, yeah. like if I paint myself as a bad person, that's fine. Like I can <laughs> do that. But like when somebody else does it, yeah, like yeah. it does bother me. And whether that's yeah. critical, that's just, I feel it just was like, Cause I didn't, I didn't mean to be that way. Like, yeah. like I fucking, like I talked to my chat about, it, I was like, I wasn't meaning to be hostile. Like she just took it the wrong way. So yeah. I don't know. My biggest thing is when someone says I didn't do something, like when someone says I did something that I didn't do, that is my, one of my Same. biggest triggers that I'm Same. still working on Same. because I, I try to be as honest as possible. Yeah. I try to be as open as possible. And it's like, when I am actually, when I know I'm a good person and someone th thinks that I'm not like that, that really bothers me. Sure. And I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Well, first I want to say, I think like life is tiny contradictions. I, mm -hmm. I just think that's how life works. And that's why it's so confusing because everything mm -hmm. is so, there's so much conflict in the world and you have to make peace with constant conflict. And even people you really, really love might be the people who bring that conflict. And so you're looking at it like, how do I have peace with people? And the question, like, I think it starts with yourself. How do I have peace with myself? And then how mm -hmm. do I exhibit and give that to people? But it doesn't always work. People don't always see you. And I really have a yeah. belief that people are multifaceted. Most people, mm -hmm. let's say there's some who aren't, I guess. But like, there are parts of us that we can see and parts of us we can't. I'm sure there are parts of you I really won't understand because like, I don't mm -hmm. understand that. But I think if we work together to see what we can, that's where the mm -hmm. relationship is built off of, right? Yeah. Like, and then yeah. we, we like leave room for the parts we can't see. I saw I saw um, a part of the conversation you and Kyla had, which for me was like a huge epiphany for one of the problems I'm having in this space. Because mm -hmm. one of the reputations I have in this space is that um, Brittany condones really bad behavior because she doesn't want prescriptions and she doesn't want to force people to be like her. And then mm -hmm. the irony is that when I am judgy for the few moments I am, everyone's like, Brittany's so judgy. And I'm, I'm going to fucking kill everybody. What are you guys talking yeah. about? Do you want me to be judgy or do you want me to be less judgy? So I'm just going to do yeah. what I'm going to do. But Kyla said something like um, uh, a debate is there to change your mind. Now, yeah, I, think, I, I think a debate probably is. And a discussion is more like what we're doing, which is like, I'm not here to mm -hmm. change you, girl, but let's talk about mm -hmm. it. But OK, minus the definitions, that fucking blew my mind where I was like, see, you guys are trying to change people. And I'm saying no. Mm -hmm. But then Kyla said. This is what blew my mind. She said, just because you change the way you think of ideas doesn't mean I'm asking you to change who you are. And I'm like, um, I just I pers I personally disagree because like, OK. So if we use the debate, the, the definition, all right, the, like your de your definition yeah. or whatever you just said. um, And you apply it to like a debate, an actual debate, right? Like at the U.N. Yeah. Let's say we're at the U.N. They're having a debate. They debate over things that they're going to change, right? Mm -hmm. Like, right. We're, they're going to like, oh, if we have to allocate this amount of money to this or we have to allocate right. this amount of, like, the whole goal is to change someone's mind, right? Yes. So when she says, like, you can, like, try and get people to change, but, like, not, like, however you worded it, like, I totally agree. Like, that's not true. Like, that's yeah. not true, right? Yeah. Like, that's not, that's not true, right? Yeah. Like, no, that's what my whole life, trust me, as a person who's, like, very different from the way I was raised, my parents hope I change my mind to be more yeah. like them. Everyone wants yeah. you to change your mind to be more like them so they are comfortable. Mm -hmm. And I think mm -hmm. that's fair, but I also decline. <laughs> Yo, exactly. And that's my thing. So, it's never that I didn't want to change, right? Okay, so, and I, people don't listen to me when I have conversations. I always say this. I was like, just because I'm not changing right now does not mean I'm going to not change right. down the road. I want to right. change organically. Mm. I believe that this is my journey to go through, so I will change when I am meant to change. And if right. you don't watch me consistently, but for the people who watch me consistently, who have been here from the beginning, they see a massive difference in my behavior already. And yes. also I'm starting to learn more on the business end. And that's how I wanted it to happen. I, people, I, I like tried to stress to them, like you're wasting your time yeah. because it's going to happen organically. That's a part of, if you're living, if you're alive, if your heart is beating, you are living and growing and changing every single day. Yeah. So for, for you guys to think that I'm sitting here saying, oh, I'm never going to change. Humans change. You're going to change. Like it's, it's just yeah. a part of it. So 
I think, and, and it's not even like changing. It's like you're doing a metamorphosis. Like you yeah, start off one absolutely. thing and it's like, and it, and it takes time, but allow people that time, allow people to learn their lessons when they're meant to learn their lessons, not because you want them to learn that lesson right now, because I guarantee you 10 times out of 10, they're not going to take your advice because mm. they, most of the time people come at it from a place of you need to change instead of, I think it would be healthy if you looked at this and considered whether or not it's worthy of change Yes. or like, Hey, let me just understand you so I can be there with you along the journey. Yeah. And granted, there are times where it's like, I'm not going to be a part of your journey until you change because it is unhealthy for both parties. But, you know, at least be honest and communicative about that. Like say yeah. like, look, I love you as a human. And I did this with another girl streamer that I used to talk to. It's like, I'm on my own journey, so I can't help you through yours, but right. this is how I feel because I'm going through it myself. And yeah. like I said, unless you go through it, you will never fully understand. And I understand because I'm going through it, but it's like my healing, my comfort is important. This is my community. This is my part of the internet. So it's like, I don't have to subscribe to what people want me to do, want me to listen to change, whatever, because it's my journey and I'm doing what I feel inside is right. You know, um, I just went through, cause I have like a thousand privated videos cause I've been on the internet for like 12 years and I just went through some of them with my audience and some of my newer audience is like, what? And I'm like, Oh, this was Brittany here at this stage and here she is in this mm -hmm. moment. And here she is yeah. in this. And the change is so clear. I definitely aged younger. I look so much better <laughs> now than I did when I was younger. Like, you know, you just learn so much about yourself. Yeah. Even mm -hmm. the fact that I used to straighten my hair and hate my natural hair. Mm -hmm. Now I'm like, uh, what? I was the same way. how? Like yeah. how? But then yeah. I remember crying to my mom and hating her for not letting me like, you know, straighten my hair chemically. Yeah. And I'd be so upset with how I looked. And I was like, oh my gosh, I hate this big Middle Eastern nose. And why is this happening yeah. to me? Yeah. And then yeah. you really learn like your, well, for me, my my body's a vessel. Like this is yeah. like the thing that holds my consciousness. And then I go through life with this body, which even with yeah. the fibromyalgia and the borderline and the PTSD, mm -hmm. you know, it's not too bad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, that's it's the thing. Not. Like a big uh, part of my philosophy is like taking negative things and transmute it into positive energy. Like, mm. you know, there are certain things that I've been through that it, like, you, it's really easy to get into a negative mindset. Trust me. I know. Yeah. Like I, whenever I say like, just be positive. I want people to know that I were, I was that way once, like literally could not wake up could not get out of bed, literally crying, waking up, wanting yeah. to fucking kill myself, not starving, my like doing all these things. Trust me, I know how it feels. But when you, and I know this is cliche to say, but when you think positively, you will see those positive changes. Mm. Like you put a positive spin on anything. That's why people are like, oh, aren't you scared of losing your job? Aren't you scared of getting fired? No, because that's a positive thing. How is that positive? I can stream full time if I get fired. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it's and it's meant to happen. I truly put my faith in the universe leading me down this path and it's been working out. I, the analytics are there. The good feelings are there. So yeah. I don't feel manic because this has been a long like experience and not just like short. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. it's like I'm doing it right. I feel like it's right. And that's all that matters. So yeah. Do you experience a literal mania? Uh, I don't know what that is. OK, just checking because mania is often associated with bipolar but i thought mm. when i was first diagnosed with borderline that also borderlines got mania but apparently that's actually not very common so when you said i don't feel manic mm -hmm. i wasn't sure if you meant literally mania or not i'm just making sure well, no just like that like i don't want it to be like i'm crazy because like i still sometimes myself say like i said i doubt myself sometimes so i'm like am i manic am i crazy because you see all these con these comments and like even though people can say like oh it doesn't bother me humanly it does bother us right yeah. What we choose to like, uh, how, how much we let it affect us is our choice, right? So like, yes, sometimes it does affect me when it, it doesn't so much anymore because it's stopped. But back when like, I, I was really new to this and like, everyone's like, you're manic, you're schizo, you're this, you're that. Like, it's like, am I? Like, yeah. is there something wrong with me? Which granted, yes, there's something wrong <sighs> with me. I have BP, like, but like, I'm not, I hate when people like say, oh, you're acting like this because you're BPD. No, I'm being a normal fucking human. Right. I'm being who my personality is. It's not because I'm yes. BPD. Me, like, all of a sudden, like, shifting on you, like, because you trigger me, like, screaming at you, yelling, you, throwing shit, like, and then, like, immediately apologizing. Oh, I'm so sorry. Like, for, like that would be, like, an aspect of my BPD. Sure. And trust me, I used to be like that. So it's, like, it's not fair when people contribute everything to, like, mental illness because that's not Oh, true. it sucks. Like, no matter what you do. And that's why I do think some people 
don't get diagnosed with things and share it because they they will explode. Like the men on this space will explode, will yell, will be emotional, will get mm-hmm. triggered. But for them, they're not like criticized at any length to the extent that women mm-hmm. are when we do it. And especially since mm-hmm. we're out with our mental illnesses, mm-hmm. it's always like your mental illness. I'm like, am I never allowed to be upset or feel injustice yeah. over something yeah. that is upsetting? And it's like, no, you're not. So that's one of the things I've learned from this space is that if they don't really respect mental health, they're never going to actually validate your emotions mm-hmm. when it's even justified. Even being yeah. upset isn't allowed when you have mental illness because they always expect you to be in control, which is just so mm-hmm. unrealistically unfair. But that's why I also want to focus on making my own space here because I can't allow those spaces to infiltrate to my audience that mm-hmm. I want to take care of and I want to facilitate goodness in and mm-hmm. tell them like you are not defined by this thing you've been diagnosed with. You can – your consciousness is having a relationship with it. Like I don't identify as somebody who – is her borderline. I look at borderline Mm -hmm. like a broken leg. It's like, yeah, something, it's something that happened to me. I deal with it. I learn to live with it, but it's not Mm -hmm. me. What about you? Mm -hmm. Do you think it's like you? My mental illness? Yeah. I think, okay. So the way I visualize it, I think like, so say from the moment you're diagnosed with BPD, like you have this darkness in your head, right? It's like dark, dark. It's, it's who you are. It's like everything. It encompasses your entire life. But as you start to ch- like change and get help and you know do healthy things, the the dark ball gets smaller and smaller and smaller to where it allow. It's kind of like you know curtains. It allows your real self to kind of like take main stage. And yes, while it's still there, you can choose whether or not to listen to it. And when it like does need extra attention, you can give it attention in a healthy way. Like like a lot of inner child talk, like I am aware that you are upset right now. I understand why you're upset right now, but you do not have to be upset because you're not alone. Yeah. Or if you want to be upset, that is okay, but make sure you're expressing it in a positive way. Not like breaking shit, like cutting yourself, like stuff yeah. like that. Like, yeah. so it's, it's, it's what you do with it and like how you deal with it. That really, really matters. So while I am my illness, I think my illness is more my illness is more me now like cuz I have control cuz like I I tell it when, when to come up yeah, I tell yeah, it when, yeah. you know what I'm saying like I have control over myself yeah. back then I used to not so yeah I would say that now I am a different person and honestly if you kind of kill that that side of you it makes mental healing a lot easier cuz it's mm. like almost like it's ceremonial you can have that funeral you can say goodbye to the person you once were and like start fresh and start anew so that's yep. how I view it yep I will say I'm a big checklist person. So I, if I feel myself feeling like a heightened sense of emotion or mm-hmm. like sometimes I'm overstimulated, I'll do my checklist to be like, okay, is this the borderline, neurodivergency in general, PTSD, or just normal people feelings? <laughs> like, mm-hmm. It's like you're asking, you're, you're having a relationship yeah. with yourself and trying to figure out, okay, like what am I yeah, really experiencing? Yeah. And it, you know what's so funny is that that skill is really difficult, like you said earlier, because not only are other people telling you what it is mm-hmm. and they're wrong probably, but you might even lie to yourself about what it is. Like, girl, yeah. I watched my old private videos about my – I have a video that's private now. It's called like having depression and anxiety. And mm-hmm. I was listening to it. And this is undiagnosed Brittany. She doesn't know she has borderline. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And as she's talking, she's naming every symptom of borderline and she thinks it's depression and anxiety. And I'm like, you dumb bitch. You, <laughs> yeah, like, oh yeah. That's God. the thing. Yeah. It's kind of like this aha <sighs> moment when you're like, they're listing all these things off. It's like, that's me. Yeah. Hold on. That's another one. That's me. There's yes. more. Oh, shit. Yes. This is me. So, it, but it's like, I don't know if it's with all like mental illnesses, but like for BPD, like I feel like it's like one of the most like, romanticized it's Mm. one of the most like i think i don't know it's bpd is like oh i want a cute crazy bpd girl it is not fun no it is not fun it is not romantic i i it's it's like i and this is just me person i know schizophrenia is extremely difficult but like my life is my i think bpd is one of the hardest things i've ever had to deal with like anything like it's like it's so difficult like you're sitting there it's almost like you take a back seat in your head like you see yourself doing this you see yourself you know it's wrong but it's like you you can't do anything about it yeah. no matter how much you say okay remove the trigger or it's you just can't mm. you just can't Once I'm in it's it, so scary <laughs> excuse me i will say once i'm in it i mm. i now look at myself when i'm 
like, and it's been years since I've been like splitting or anything, but when I mm-hmm. was, I, when I was doing therapy and getting out of it, I will say like, I feel like I recovered pretty heavily because I was reading a lot about philosophy and spirituality mm-hmm. as well in conjunction with therapy, but I almost could see before I thought it was me. I thought it was me mm-hmm. down to my core. Like this is who you are forever. Yeah. And then yeah. once I got the therapy, it was like, I was looking at myself going through it and I was like, girl, what are you doing? And I couldn't pull mm-hmm. myself out. So once yeah. I find myself in it, it's not like I have the skill set to pull myself out. I just have the skill set not to hurt people. I have the skill set not yeah. to self-harm because I was yeah. a self-harmer and I have a skill set to like not attempt, right? Because I would try yeah. to attempt yeah. in yeah. different ways. I would I mean, do all kinds of things. So at this point in my life, since I haven't had that problem, but even with my PTSD, when it happens, same thing. It's like I almost like move out of my body and I watch myself. I'm like, oh man, okay, we're still working on this, but at least mm-hmm. we know what's happening now. Now we have an answer for this thing that I thought was just who I was. Mm-hmm. Would you, would you, something about that, that you said was like, you know, attempts and all that, like, would you, for me, the way I've worked it out is, so when I would have my suicide attempts, I thought I wanted to die, right? Mm, I thought mm-hmm. I wanted to die. Mm-hmm. I didn't actually want to die. And if I actually wanted to die, I would have succeeded, right? Mm. So my thought is people who attempt suicide don't actually want to die because if they actually wanted to die, they would die, right? Mm. Like someone who actually wants to die, they would, they would, yeah, pull yeah. Tr- they don't care how they, like you, your goal is to kill yourself you, yeah you're gonna do it right so is that like an outlandish thought because i want to i i it's something that i have been pondering today because we talked about it earlier in my yeah chat and it's like am i wrong in thinking that mm. like because some people are like oh if they say it they mean it like don't that's rude to say like that's mean uh, no that's what i truly believe if you really wanted to kill yourself you would have killed yourself mm. okay so in my work i distinguish mm-hmm. suicide and chosen death as two different things i okay. think people can choose death which is conscientious and thoughtful and planned. And I'm going to tell my family and I'm going to, I have stage four cancer and I'm going to seek out government assistance Mm -hmm. or I'm going to make a decision to end my life and take a pill and go to sleep. That's like, I want to do this. I'm being very thoughtful and considerate about it. I'm not just like one day doing Mm -hmm. it, spur of the moment off of a, you know, but suicide, when you think about unaliving yourself in a real way, I think it is you screaming out like with your consciousness saying like I hurt so much Mm -hmm. and I don't know what to do with this amount of pain and nothing Mm -hmm. seems good enough I just want it to Mm -hmm. stop so I know Mm -hmm. for myself I don't want to die like Mm -hmm. I joke like oh I don't want to pay taxes kill me now but that's Mm -hmm. not really what I mean what I mean is like life can get so hard or existence can get so difficult or my brain can be so difficult that it feels like death makes sense as a release or Mm -hmm. I feel trapped. And so I feel like that would be a good outlet. But now when I work with people, I always say like, do you want to kill yourself or do you actually just want the pain to stop, bro? Because we can get you to a place where the pain stops or at least is mitigated and harm reduction is, you know, we get to that conclusion. But I do think people can choose death. And I believe in assisted government suicide. I believe in people helping. I call it chosen death because suicide, again, has that connotation of like people need help. And Mm -hmm. I feel if you need help, then that's not that's different than, you know what I mean? I think so many people have died who didn't want to die. And that is a reflection of society and reflection Mm -hmm. of a lack of tools. We have failed Mm -hmm. as a society that people feel a need and trapped in their need to kill themselves in a negative way. There was one time where I literally was having like one of my splitting episodes where I, it was the, one of the worst I'd ever seen. Mm-hmm. And like, I made like, usually I'll just fucking deal with it. I'll do whatever I need to do to kind of get that release and then like regret it later. Like I'll do it now, regret it later. That's what I yeah. would do. But I made the conscious decision to call the suicide hotline and they put me on hold. <laughs> Girl, no. They put me on hold. Sitting there, oh, no. crying my eyes out, having my hyperventilation panic attack, beating shit, punching shit. Girl. Like, I'm going to fucking, like, do, you know, please hold while we get you someone. <laughs> I'm like, what if I had a gun? I would have just. That was it right there. Those two seconds. To, you know, yeah. Like, oh. thanks. Thanks for no thanks. Like, what? That is Are so you, funny. Like, it was crazy. Now that I think back, I mean, I lived in Seattle for five years and I, you know, I was making some of my first adult friends, the first adult people I wanted. And I couldn't tell you, I was like splitting every day, bro. It was like every day was mm-hmm. a trigger. Every day was an episode. I don't even know how I worked full time. My therapist was so impressed. She's like, wow, you have a full time job. I was like, yeah, I have like two. And she's like, what? And I was mm-hmm. like, what? And she goes, that's really abnormal for borderlines. I was like, really? That's weird. And she goes, I was like, because work, work, it's just, mm-hmm. it's not special. Work is the mm-hmm. thing that makes me calm down. Mm. I work seven days a week now and I'm like, yeah, mm-hmm. that makes sense because it's like mm. the thing that gives me yeah. now working 
I always professionally nannied. I'm great with kids. Like I'm awesome. I, with I was a nanny. Yeah, me yeah. Too. I that's where yeah. I thrive the best. But if I have to like go to an office, if I have to go to a nine to five, if I have to work with yes. adults, I'm like I'm gonna. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Bro. I agree. I, I, so, I, 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 I most definitely agree. Keep in mind, I work seven days a week doing this, so like I feel very blessed. Okay, this yeah. is like a very lovely place to go. But I also am making such an effort to f- focus on the money now because you're. Right, I've never been a money person. Like I always yeah. thought I was. I always dreamed of being a money person, but man, I struggle. So this year is like, okay, guys, Brittany's going to focus on money <laughs> and be very good about it because I want this to be my job forever because it's the best for my mental health. It's the best for my spoons. I'm really good at it. And as a kid, I dreamed of being a talk radio host. And this is the closest I'm going to get, girl. <laughs> yeah. Well, no. See, don't limit yourself because – so for me, no, no, like, If I'm a talk radio host, I have to work with other adults. Oh, that's true. See? Well, do I you have feel, to have a team. Do you, do you feel feel fulfilled? Yes. Oh, I feel. Well, I feel like I. Oh, I feel like I've been joyful for like three years now. I guess we're going into our fourth. Like I feel mm-hmm. really, really good about all the decisions I've made mm-hmm. with this brain. Yeah, <laughs> I really appreciate this brain. Not that I don't appreciate past Brittany. I mean, I yeah. do. She got me here. You know. So yeah, yeah, I think a lot of people like to tell you how like you're successful or how you're not successful. Yeah. Like for me, like. The money will come no matter what. Like I've been in situations mm. where I I didn't think I was going to be able to pay my rent and like the universe or whatever would just tell me like the money will come, be calm. And like the day comes where I need that money and like it, it was there. Like it always worked out no matter if it was the decisions that were made by me or other people, like the money will come. If you're doing something with good intention and you are following your life path and doing what you're meant to do, what your purpose is everything else will be taken care of. Mm. Just worry about doing the right decisions to lead, continue moving on down that path. And to me, I'm successful. I may not be on the level of like, you know, Aiden or XQC or any of them, sure. but like right now this is successful to me. Yeah. And if I'm meant to get like that, which I think that's, that's what I would like. That's mm. what I would love. And if it's meant for me, it will happen. It will come to me when it's ready to come to me, when it's you know meant to come to me. And right now, I'm just living in the moment, enjoying the success that I have and being grateful. And when you're grateful, good things come. So Okay. So I know right now, because I would agree with you technically that if you work hard and you do your thing and like you're mm-hmm. vibing, that life will happen the way it's supposed to happen and that mm-hmm. things will probably work out relatively okay. You don't have to worry too much. I I brought optimism mm-hmm. into my life a few years ago. I think I'm really – a uh, big fan of it. I used to be so mm-hmm. cynic and bitter and all these things. Mm-hmm. Now I'm like, bro, like optimism is so much better, bro. It's like a joint, but better. It's great. Um, but I know people are listening to this and they're thinking, I work really hard and I am struggling still. And a part of it is, it, I don't want to say like change your mindset, bro. I want to say that the difference between like saying it will happen and doing it for me, I would say is like the structure and the intentionality and the mm-hmm. real, like being honest with yourself about the intentionality. Mm-hmm. I think mm-hmm. a lot of people are not being honest with themselves about mm-hmm. the way they work hard. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? And so I wonder how would you explain that to people so they don't feel like when they're listening to us, they're hearing, um, I'm not good enough and I, it never happens for me. Like they don't feel that way. Like, I think it goes back to the limiting beliefs, right? So Mm. say you have an individual who thinks they're meant to do this and they're struggling, they're not happy. It's okay to that not have that be meant for you. Like for me, I'm super intelligent, right? Mm. Super intelligent. I love animals. I was going to vet school for a while. I recently just stopped. I enjoy animals, but maybe it's not what I'm meant to do. I can still love animals. I can still be around animals, but not have it be my profession. This is the first thing that has come to me naturally. It feels natural. I don't have to try. Things just lay into my lap and that's it. This is how I know this is what I'm meant to be doing because it feels easy. Mm. I even though it is work, it does not feel like work. Yeah. When I work with children, I love children. I, I work. Love I'm a teacher. I, I love kids. I want to be the person for kids that I didn't have when mm. I was a kid. Like, that's why I work with kids. But it's not what I'm meant to be doing because it is not easy like this is. And yeah. when I'm at work, I want to be here. I want mm-hmm. to be entertaining people. I want to be doing things. Yeah. I like being in front of the camera. I like being in, like, it just comes naturally to me. And some people are like that. Some people are singers. Some people are actors. Some people are meant to be garbage men because they they like garbage drugs and they're good at it. It comes easy. But I feel like people get so caught up in the fucking, oh, sorry, the idea of success when in reality, success is exclusive to you. It's intimate to you. Yeah. So like, why should external, you know, people's opinions matter? And honestly, the money shouldn't matter either because you're going to have enough. You're going to have what you need to survive. And people get caught up in having too much. And that's when it becomes a problem. Too much money or not enough money. Like, like I said, be in the middle. You don't need too much. You don't need not enough. And 
I don't know. I just feel like people get caught up in the wrong things and, you know. Well, they do. I think that's like a fact, right? Like we're dealing with mm-hmm. people. We see it on talk radio shows. We see it on TV. We see it on YouTube. Like people will come to – okay, well, hold on. Wait. Now this is a great example I can use towards you actually because like people will tell me, Brittany, I just want like a great relationship. Then why are you flirting with XQC? Okay. So listen. <laughs> let me tell you why. You want to know the honest answer? Yes, I want to know. <laughs> so this – I listen, I've used the phrase, do you want an honest answer before? But this time, I swear. Okay, I swear I'm being honest. Okay, so one, I benefit from having a parasocial relationship with XQC online. Let's just be honest. Content is content. Now, offline, I would like to date him, but only to practice the things I've been learning in therapy. I am aware that if I date XQC, is he my soulmate? Who knows? That's not the point. We don't need to worry about the end. Yeah. But I know that getting in a relationship will help me practice. Now, I'm not really attracted to anyone right now. Mm. And I feel like he is the perfect candidate because he's mm. he's successful. He's It's not that I'm clout chasing. It's just sure. like, you know what I'm saying? It's content. I think it would be funny to have the parasocial relationship online and then like date him like IRL because then it's like it's like this like it's perfect. It's content because I've already established myself on the internet as parasocial to him. So yeah, it's yeah. Like if I start dating, it's like it's it's content, but also like intimately and privately, I could practice things like you know healthy boundaries. If he does eventually cheat on me, I want to be able to say this is not the behavior I deserve. This is mm. not the treatment I deserve. I'm walking away. Yeah. So I, for me, I'm right now. I'm not worried about dating. If I were to date anyone, it would be him. And those are my reasons why. Right now, I'm chilling. I yeah. am celibate. I'm not worried about relationships. I'm work- I'm focused on being successful. I'm focused on, you know, grinding. A relationship will come when it's meant to come. It's not, I don't want to like be searching for it in everyone because that was a big part of my P- BPD. Yeah. I searched and searched and searched and I accepted the love I thought I deserved. And, you know, the love bombing and the hot and cold, I hate you, I love you. It's mm. It was just too much. It's a lot. And I acknowledge that it was me. Like, granted, my ex did things wrong too. Nobody's ever innocent. But like majority, like, girl, the things I did to him mm. as someone with BPD, like I, that's the guilt that I have to live with. And I have yeah. apologized but- you know, not having that, like, I forgive you moment. It's, it's really hard, but sometimes yeah. you don't get closure. Sometimes yeah. you don't, and you've got to make your own closure. You got to make your own forgiveness. And the only thing that I can do right now to ever make up for what I did to him is to work on myself yeah. and be good to myself because he did love me and that's what he wants ultimately. Mm. So I believe that if I love myself and I work on myself and become healthy and healed, that he will forgive me and that it will be enough to make up to what I did to him. So. How do you feel about the idea that like forgiveness is for those other people? They're not for us. Like I don't believe in f- receiving forgiveness. I think forgiveness mm-hmm. is for those people so they don't have to carry the burden of like what I did to them. Mm-hmm. I think that – I feel like if you haven't forgiven yourself first, forgiveness isn't going to matter. True, true, I true. do believe though that like when I seek forgiveness from someone, like my, ex- my ex-boyfriend for example, mm. it's truly because I want – to know that he knows I was sorry for everything I did. Like, it's important. I'm not wanting it, like, to say whatever's wrong. Like, I just, I truly want his forgiveness because I want to know that he doesn't hate me. Yeah. I want to know that he knows I was sick, and he does. I I know he knew, and I know that he does love me, but it's like, I live with this guilt every day because I did love him so much. I loved him so much and he loved me and he was sitting there trying to make me realize that he loved me he would tell me every single day and he's like you're you're hurting me you're pushing me away you're doing all these things and it's like deep down inside i know i didn't want to but i did and i just i am so sorry for everything i did to him and like i i hope that this me working on myself me becoming successful for myself will be good enough for him like to make up for it yeah it's it's just hard it's hard because when you're in that like you don't see that it's you. You don't see you're sick. You right. don't see you're sick because it's like your mind is telling you it's them, it's them, it's them. And it's like when you get out of it, it's like the truth hits you and it's like heartbreaking that you were the problem all along. Yeah. You were the problem all along. And he kept trying to tell me. He kept trying to tell me and I didn't listen. But now I can only accept it as a lesson, apologize, which I've done and work on myself and continue to work on myself and, you know, be extremely respectful of his feelings, which granted talking about him on the internet is probably not like a good thing, but at the same time, I'm not doing it from like a a negative reason. Like I'm not trying to like ruin his life or anything. It's just a part of my experience. Yeah. Yeah. And I know that 
if he is watching me, I, I, I would like to think he's proud of me because he, he, for a long time, like, he's like, I don't get why you don't just stream. Cause you're, you know, you've got the, you've got the personality, you've got the looks like yeah. he, you know, he would tell me to stream a lot and he himself used to stream. So, you know, it's always kind of been a part of our dynamic. Cause we're both gamers. We're both on the internet, you know? So it's like, he was one of my biggest, like, supports and i just i ruined it i literally ruined the only good thing i had in my life and it's like i gotta accept it and mm. do my best to move on and there are days where i miss him like yeah. recently i don't know like he just it was like sh- like i couldn't shake him i i hadn't thought about him in like weeks and now like i'm dreaming about him again yeah. i'm thinking about it again, which they say when it comes to like the twin flame stuff like when you're getting close to finding who you're meant to be with next like they may pop up again mm-hmm. which could just be like x is popping back up but you know I just, I don't know if that's it, but if he did pop back up, I probably would only talk to him just to let him know I'm sorry. Like, I would take full advantage of that and let him go if that's what I was meant to do. I don't think that we are at a point where we can have a relationship that we both deserve, mainly because I'm busy and he's busy. Yeah. Um, And honestly, I hurt him so much. I don't want him to be with me ever again because... No matter how much I go through, no matter how hard I work, no matter what I change, there's that part of me that's scared that I'm going to hurt him again and he doesn't deserve that. So I would rather him be with somebody else than be with me because I could hurt him again. And I don't, I promised myself I would never, ever, ever hurt him again. Mm. So you think he's one of your soulmates? Um, Like I said, I think he is either more a karmic cycle or, you know, a twin flame. But, yeah. you know, if he does come back in the end and, you know, the universe does try to bring us together when we're older and like mm-hmm. we're ready to settle down, then, hey, it happens. But it's sure. like, I just, I don't want to hurt him ever again because yeah. I, I love him and, and I, I don't know. I just, it sucks because like you said, are you, are you your mental illness? And it, at that time, like I was my mental illness. Yeah. yeah. I just, I didn't realize it. I didn't realize it. Yeah. I think it's hard when you have that particular story because it is something you do have to take responsibility for and it sucks Mm -hmm. to admit like, man, I'm that category. I just know like even in my dysfunctional relationships, when I realized like one time I was like, I was like yelling at my partners because like, you know, you're going through a lot of emotions and you're upset Mm -hmm. and you're like, why am I upset? And you realize like, oh my God, like I'm the kind of person who's like yelling at my partner and like we're yelling at each other. And I always say like if you're in a dysfunctional relationship, you can't just blame your partner like you're there too. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of the defense we have because of our egos is to be like, yeah, but it's not my fault. I didn't, you know, I I had to do this. I had to hurt them. Mm -hmm. I had to cheat. I had to lie. I had to hit them because like Mm -hmm. they were being this way. And I'm like, That's why I would say, like, what are your values? How do you know you're a good person? And what does that mean? Mm -hmm. It's so subjective. So for me, I feel like I didn't – I had to go on the journey of figuring out my values. Like, what are my true – even when temptation hits, even when I want to Mm -hmm. engage, what are my values so I can look at them and be like, I want to hit you, but I'm not going to because my values say don't do that. And I'm like, I'm not going to do it because I don't want to be that person. But, like, what is – like, what is the journey in relation to your values? Because I felt like I didn't have mine until I was, like, about 30. And then I was like, okay, mm-hmm. I really know what what will make me feel guilty, which is betrayal of my own mm-hmm. values, and shame, which is the betrayal of my culture around mm-hmm. me, right? Mm-hmm. I think my values right now, and like you said, you, you're 34 now, 34 now, and, you, you know, you have a good idea of what your values are. I think that the older you get – uh, the more you do accrue right now, I may only have a few, like for sure. One of my biggest values is to be true to yourself. Like, mm. you know, no matter how much flack you get, no matter how much pushback you get, like don't waver. Now I'm not talking about being pigheaded. Yeah. Like if you're clearly in the wrong, like be wrong. All right. And people are going to be like, Oh, well you don't know how to taste. Shut up. Okay. I don't yeah, yeah, yeah. pushback, but I'm not going to like change my, my mind for somebody else. Like I'm very, very, sh- like I'm so strongly about like believing what you believe and allowing yourself to believe that without worrying about what other people are going to think. And I'm working Mm -hmm. on it. Another value I may have is, you know, setting good boundaries for yourself because I, I tend to allow people to walk all over me IRL and like, I'm very timid and shy. And like, I want, I don't want to be like, I don't know, difficult with people because like, you know, I was made to feel that way growing up. So like, I, I, you know, but I've been learning to set boundaries. Like, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this. And so if you have a problem with that, bye. Because if you have a problem with a very healthy boundary, th- that says something about you. Totally. And people so, will. So People yeah. will. No, most definitely. Most yeah. definitely. I, I, I think with like a few, because there's a, without like saying too much, there was like 
there was another individual on the internet who I had to worry about because we were going to do a collab and it's like, there's all these allegations or there's this, there's this. And it's like, at the end of the day, I can consent. If I say no, mm. that's my boundary. Yeah, I can go in and do this, but I can make it to where my, my boundary is not swayed. Yeah. If it ever gets uncomfortable, if I ever feel violated, I can remove myself from that situation Absolutely. because I feel strong enough to do so now, which in the past, well, I'm not going to lie. I was pressured into having sex when I didn't want to have sex mm. or, you know, doing certain things because I thought that this person would like me more. Like I never had boundaries and having boundaries is like a turn on for me. Like I oh. feel good. Cause mm. like I have a, like, I like turn myself on like, holy shit. Like, you know, yeah. you, you're setting these boundaries for yourself. You're not feeling like, like, am I in the wrong? Like, yeah. should I not be setting this boundary? Like, I don't know if I'm going to set this boundary and that's it. If you don't like it, you don't, you don't have to like it, but I'm not changing it. So those are what that's, I think ultimately right now in this moment, what is super important to me and I'm working on it. It's, it's not like I'm going to just like automatically know how to do those things. It's, it's, it's practice. Yeah. And you know, so. You know what's funny is I was just because um after this I'm gonna talk to my audience about like mm-hmm. um I do pretty intentional dating like the mm-hmm. idea is like we're gonna have a long life together I can give mm-hmm. advice on different kinds of relationships mm-hmm. but tonight we're focusing on that and I was rereading my DMs from me and my partner mm-hmm. and one of the moments of like I was realizing how much I was attracted to him when he put down his boundaries and he's like is that okay and I was like. That is so attractive. Mm-hmm. Like, please put down boundaries. Please tell me you yes. know yourself well enough to say, hey, like, yeah. I need to go to sleep. I have work in the morning. And I'm like, yeah, cool. Yeah. Because yeah. I dated so many people in the past that just unintentionally their boundaries and my boundaries don't align. So they don't mm-hmm. mean to, but they're like, stay up all night and talk to me. And I was like, I have borderline. Yeah. I need to sleep. I need to eat. And I need to drink enough water. I need to take mm-hmm. care of my body mm-hmm. because I noticed over the last four years, I feel like one of the reasons I've been really good about my issues is that I have gotten enough sleep and I have focused on water and food. I focus on like taking swear- care of my body. I, s- I swear to God. So like for my biggest trigger, like I noticed was when I was tired, mm-hmm. like my, my ex, my ex would be like, go to sleep. You need yep. sleep. Like, please sleep right now because he would know when it was hitting. It was like this switch on me. Mm-hmm. If I got too tired, all of a sudden it's like, yep. I'm just, it's terrible. Yep. And so the minute I went to bed, I was happy as a clam. Yep. We get in bed, cuddle and it, like, I wake up fine, but it, sleep was definitely a big trigger for me. It was almost like a crying baby. Yes. Like if a baby's tired, they're cranky. That's yeah. exactly, and oh. that's exactly how I behaved. I'm the and worst. I mean, yes, it's, mm-hmm. it's infantile, but like, I couldn't, like, I couldn't help it. Like, and also I learned that it's like goes into like fear of missing out. Yeah. So like if you don't want to sleep, it's because you think that you're going to miss out on something or something's going to happen. Maybe when you were growing up, you didn't feel safe sleeping. Yeah. So it's like you don't sleep. And I think that's something. Well, now my sleep schedule's fucked up. So there is there's not really a baseline for me to say. So yeah. yeah. But that is, missing sleep was one of my biggest triggers for sure. Yeah. And I, look, even though I'm not like totally perfect at it, right? I, you know, mm-hmm. I, my sleep schedule is so weird because like almost 10 p.m. my time. But then the Internet's yeah. just waking up and I'm like, I have to figure out my job. And that I'm supposed to sleep till noon, but then construction starts and all of a sudden I'm awake yeah. and it's like, okay, yeah. I'll figure this out. So I just like take naps during the day right now because I'm like, I don't know mm-hmm. what else to do, bro. But yeah. I will say um, that there is like this idea, I think when you have mental health, that your body's not having a relationship with your consciousness or mm-hmm. your brain, but it absolutely is. And sleep is one yeah. of the most studied and connected things to your brain health mm-hmm. that I'm like, we're neglecting it. And I know, I can't tell you how many times, girl, I stayed up. I had like little spouts of insomnia and I'd be like, I'm writing the best thing I've ever written tonight. And then I'd wake up the next day. I'm like, girl, go to bed. Yeah. Like it wasn't even <laughs> yeah. that good. Or I'd be yeah. high because like I'm a big weed fan and like yeah, I would be smoking and I'd be enjoying like I'm like this is genius and i'm like sit no, down I snoop s- dog like sit no. down <laughs> listen listen it works for me really? my high thoughts work for me because it taps into like so like when i get high which i'm not high now you know i was like oh, i won't smoke whatever i wanted to have like a normal conversation and i know that yeah. when i smoke i kind of get in my head but like yeah. i have some of the best thoughts when i'm high and i think honestly weed kind of lowers my inhibitions which allows me to heal mm. even more so my favorite thing to do is get high meditate and journal oh and for i sure. did I did a lot of the inner child healing while I was high and it helped me like uncover memories that I didn't even know I had, like learned a lot about myself. Yeah. I think weed is a spiritual thing, for sure. um, especially if you smoke weed with intent. Oh. Every time before I smoke, I set my intention or set like what my goal is for that yeah. high and it it gives me exactly what I want. I always so ask whether myself, it's a- right? Am I going to party tonight mm-hmm. or am I going to meditate tonight? Yeah. And exactly. these are different intentions. Even when I do shrooms, when I do DMT, yeah. when I've done acid, I do, whatever. I want to do shrooms so bad. I want to do Girl, shrooms. my last trip, girl, I'm not going to play with you. I did mm. this trip and I did it outside and I sat there and I was like, 
I would like to be sober now. I was like, oh, I took too much. And like I'm yeah. sitting there and I'm having this trip and I'm seeing the world tipsy turny. I'm seeing the sky mm-hmm. like the ocean. And I'm like, what would Luffy mm-hmm. do right now, girl? Like, yeah. what would he do? And I was like, do I just give in to this? But girl, my vision literally was upside down for like four yeah. hours. I couldn't see like proper. And I was like, and I kept saying, I was like, let me go back to paying my bills. Jesus yeah. Christ, let me go back. Well, but it was so great. Like the gods were there and like all these gods yeah. were like, do you want to come party mm-hmm. with us? And I was like, you know what? I am very grateful for my life. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for reminding me of how much I like my life. <laughs> I think I think the thing is, though, like, it is a spiritual thing. It's supposed to give you information. Yeah. But it's not a thing that you can get, like, for example, like, you know how they say, if you were someone who knew everything in the world, you'd be crazy, right? Yeah. So yeah. my conspiracy theory or my theology behind it is it gives you the information you need to know in that time. Mm. If you do too much of it, it's too much information. Your brain can't process it and you're not ready for that spiritually. I've noticed with certain things like with weed, like if I start off small, the information does get a little bit more intense, but it's what I need to know in that moment. Yeah. And it's what I'm ready for. And I just now have gotten to, because I used to never smoke weed at all. I did when I was like younger, but like I hated it. I hated Mm. it. And like the, the, the breakup came and like, I was like, well, maybe let me try it out, you know? And yeah. like I said, it was very therapeutic for me, so I'm not going to stop. But, like, I think that I've just now reached a point where I would be ready for maybe something like that, maybe a microdose of mushroom or something. Oh, microdose of mushrooms? Ex- Hyper recommend. Yeah. So recommend. Yeah, so I want to I want to test the waters, and I think that would be, like, enough for me to do because I am very solitary. I don't I, – I haven't spoken to my family in, like, four years. Mm. I don't really have many IRL connections. Um, so I think that <clears throat> I, I have handled that, and – I think I could go into it with a very good mindset, uh, you know, dealing with my mental health. And yeah. like, I think it is time for me to do it because back then, let me tell you, if I did it back then, oh my God, I probably would have killed myself because it was such, I was in a negative mindset. I would have, yeah. you know, and I think that you're the mindset you're in and the energy you're in. It just, it really is accentuated by the, what you take. So I really want to try shrooms. I think I'm ready, but it's, I don't know how to like find them. I'm not like drug yeah. savvy. Like, no, honestly, we, we like, dispensaries, but. I just like trust my friends to find it. Or I trust people who like, yeah. I know personally who'd make the drugs. Cause like, honestly, like mm-hmm. I don't know how to do these things. Mm-hmm. And I'll even say, um, and now the places are opening up like in Croatia where I am, they don't have legalized drugs. So I have to go to Amsterdam if I want to do anything, which I plan <gasps> oh, to do. Oh, you're close to Amsterdam. That's yeah. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Like, well, I'm in Europe. So like, it's kind of nice. Mm-hmm. I can just like hop on a plane, and, like oh, head yeah. over. But when I was growing up, I didn't smoke weed until I was 28 because mm. I thought weed was for like losers. <laughs> and then I remember when I smoked and I first my I took like my first hit. And I was like, this is why people go to prison. And I was like, this is so dumb. And then I just went into drugs and I was open. Now, I am mm. a very like um, with drugs, I go little to big. The mm. few times I've accidentally taken too much of something, I'm like, this is like a lot. You, I couldn't even imagine. But, you know, you can I, always take more. You, you can take always less. take more. You can always take more. But every single drug gave me a different experience. And then who I was mm-hmm. doing it with, if I was doing it alone, was I meditating? What was the purpose mm-hmm. of it? I just feel like drugs are such a relationship you're having with the moment you like the person you are in that moment. Yeah. And then mm-hmm. like how much sleep have you had? What's your relationship? Like yeah. one of my friends was like not sleeping and was smoking mm-hmm. every day and it triggered psychosis weed induced psychosis bro and I was like holy shit and so one of the reasons I'm so pro sleep is like your brain needs to rest it needs to rest I think that that's another thing like I'm I'm trying to pay like I said listen to listening to your intrusive thoughts and like deciding Mm. which one's a healthy intrusive one and which not and I've really like no I've caught myself like having certain thoughts and it's like no you know that's crazy so I think that awareness yeah. at least as long as you're aware that Key. already separates you from I the, agree the craziness of it so I like, actually at agree least I'm with aware, that I, I do. I'm aware of the negative thoughts so it's like it's not that bad granted it's bad but like at least you're aware of it and that's something right. you can work on oh my intrusive thoughts feel like Britney like that is a mm. thought girl and like my partner yeah. and I will be like I just had the craziest intrusive thought and I know it's not real but like whoa yeah. and it's like you're sitting yeah. there thinking like what is this but it's yeah. not once I realized now let me tell you before I got diagnosed with borderline I literally thought my intrusive thoughts were me like mm-hmm. I thought that's what I wanted and I was like mm-hmm. but I don't even want this why am I doing mm-hmm. this like it felt mm-hmm. like I was battling this voice inside myself which kind of sounds like you are hearing voices but you're not you're just hearing yeah. your own thoughts and they're yeah. very loud and so it's one mm-hmm. of those things where again like DBT really helped me mm-hmm. I just love the therapy and I just love getting to really dissect all of these little things about myself so I can say oh mm-hmm. okay cool this is the part that's the illness and this is the part that's like my my core self how do I maintain yeah. a good relationship with the like the present moment which yeah. is very yeah. like exhausting in some ways from a from mm-hmm. a dbt perspective and a meditative spiritual perspective right these are I mm-hmm. think different experiences yeah. of living in the present 
But I am curious, if you don't mind talking about it, you don't have to, Mm -hmm. your relationship with your family. So I, and like, I can only imagine like if my parents were watching this, I could already hear my mom be like, that bitch, like she, this is, this isn't true. This isn't true. It's it's, it's true. Uh, My mom, Mm -hmm. she suffered with mental illness. She still does, I'm sure. And she's got a lot going on, which made her be a certain type of mother. And then me not knowing my father made, you know, I was around people that, you know, weren't the best for me and things happened to me. And I think the biggest problem that separated us would be the fact that they viewed my rape. So, so my brother, and, I have a half brother and half sister, Jonathan, or I'm not gonna say the name, sorry. Uh, yeah. And their dad was my first stepdad. Okay. So I don't know my real dad, but their dad was my first dad right okay um and he did those things to me that Mm. happened and I never got the proper help I never I don't know I didn't get the support that I needed and like one of the worst things that happened was they were like oh you make it all about you like you need to get over it that's their dad he's still he's still in the picture like they would go out to eat with him at dinner Mm. and stuff like that and he was at the eighth grade graduation and like I saw him and I got super triggered and like they basically said that I make everything about me, that it's my fault, that I need to get over it. It happened years ago. He's here to stay. Like you need to deal with it. And I didn't think that was right. But I was like, well, maybe I am wrong. I am like mentally ill. So maybe that is true. Maybe I need to get over it. But like once I started talking to like medical professionals and like peer groups and stuff, like I realized how shitty like that actually was. And like my mindset, like granted at the time, the decision I made to leave home was very like it was it was inspired by a lot of different things mainly like abusive relationships and threats and all these things I just and then like my parents not being supportive and it was too much and I I went to fight and flight fight or flight and I and I got the heck out of town and you know I've been living on my own and my parents I've tried to fix the relationship and I've tried to reach out when you say with your parents do you mean with with my mom and my second stepdad okay she's remarried now she's got it got it yeah she's married now and like I try to reconnect, but it's like, you can't heal in the environment that hurt you. Yeah, and until yeah. my family can like take responsibility for some of the bad things that they've done, which I take full responsibility for. I know how difficult I was. I know I reacted wrong. I know I did things wrong. Like I'm very aware, but at the same time, it's like, you can't sit here and tell me that if you had a daughter, you would sit there and say, you need to get over it. It happened. You need to deal with it. You need to get help. He's still in the picture. You got to move past it and stop yeah. making everything about you. That's hard, especially if you have That's to see. Horrible. Imagine, you, were, were you sexually assaulted at all? I was raped, yeah, in my early 20s. Okay, imagine seeing your rape, like seeing your rapist, like normally, like, oh, here he is. Yeah, no. Like imagine how how triggering that is. And to have your mother, mm. someone who you were with for a long time alone with, didn't have anybody else, yeah. to have your mother say those things about you, like, like you're crazy. Yes, I know I need to address the issues, but to get over it and move on and stop making things about me, it is about me. Yeah. He raped me. I was eight years old and he raped me. And it's like you, the fact that you're sitting here, like, no, it's not healthy. I don't care if you're my family. I don't care what we've got going on. I can't do what I need to do if I can't take care of myself. And I hope to God and pray that the universe leads me back to my family. But right now I'm working on myself. I'm I'm doing what I need to do to become a better person and take care of myself to where I can come back to my family and we can work on things together. But sometimes you just need to separate to, you know, yeah. find a way back to each other. So no, I'm know. a big proponent of it. Like I think I I'm similar where I, you know, I've, I have a really conservative family and for the most I have nine siblings and we all get along for the most part and we we're pretty good now, but it was like a, a lifelong, water, no, you're good. You're, it was like a lifelong struggle of humanizing one another and a big part of being able to humanize was moving out and I will say like I am nowhere near that status of abuse but I still Mm. obviously have my own versions of it growing up obviously I have borderline yeah (laughs) like sometimes I look at my family and I'm like I wouldn't have borderline unless I was in this family guys like so like hello ma'am like I'm taking responsibility for the fact that it's my responsibility now but it came from somewhere and if we don't like pay attention to where it came from you know what I mean we're not going to mm-hmm. we're not going to stop the cycle of abuse, right? We're not going to stop the cycle of mishandling like queer kids in this family, which is like m- past my family. It's like f- generations of a lot of Middle Eastern people, right, who are suffering from homophobia. Well, anyways, I will say moving out is everything. Like I always tell people I would rather work three jobs and live with my parents and I love them and I lived with them for a month before I came to mm-hmm. Europe because I got married and I moved here. I lived with mm-hmm. them for a month and girl, the whole time I was like, holy shit, bro. Because like right, they yeah. they don't mean to do it because they're just in their own bubble. But they're the in the 
and they're not even like they just invalidate and invalidate and it because again they're trying to make you change mm-hmm. because they want you to think more like them so they're comfortable and they feel like they don't even mean to like they're not being cruel they're being so human but it is so freaking triggering and you're like i mm. i can't with this bubble bro like i love you you're so fun can we talk yeah. about anything else but this yeah and they can't like i remember one time um i got triggered and I disassociated. And right when I disassociated, I heard my sibling say, oh, there she goes. And like, they all know I do it. And then my parents are like, what's wrong with her? Why are you doing that? Like, see, this is proof. Like, this is proof. Like, I was right. Because my mom kept saying, like, you're gay because you must have been molested. And I was like, I'm not. I was never molested as a kid as far as I know. Unless you know something, mm-hmm. I don't know. But mm-hmm. my mom has this obsession that, like, queer people must have been abused as children. <laughs> I think that sometimes could be the case. Well, of course majority, that could be the case, but I don't right? think I don't think I I do believe Wait, for the that, majority? Like, no, I'm saying like oh. majority is nat- maybe it comes yeah. naturally. Like for I sure. I don't I'm not educated enough on the science. I do know that homosexuality does appear in nature yeah. and I'm a very biological person. I mm. like science. I'm an animal science major, vet school, yeah, yeah, all yeah. that. So like I I my frame of reference is very sciencey. Yeah. So for me, homosexuality is present in nature. So yeah. I think it is a natural thing. I would argue um, that everything humans doing do is nature because we are nature. Mm. What do you think yeah, about that? Yeah. Um I think though a lot of times people ignore their natural instincts, which causes problems. So mm. I think it is like, for example, let's say it's an, a natural instinct to like for men to be very like sexually minded creatures, right? Mm. I, that's just who they are. They're they're men. Like they're meant to be sexual. I think when it becomes an issue is whenever they try to like ignore that and then they repress it, and then it like comes out as mas- like toxic masculinity. Mm, so okay, if you sure. don't allow yourself some animalistic nature, the more you suppress it, the more it's going to like eventually burst out. Kind of like how I said, like with BPD, like the person that like I, you know, am hiding inside, like if I don't let some of it come out, like the raw emotion, then I'm like eventually going to explode. Like it's like, mm. it, like you said, it's human nature to be human. So right. I don't know. I I feel like people get so caught up in like they think they love people they think what they're doing is out of love for them but i think they forget to ask what would make you feel loved yeah i think that is the question because you may want to love me and think that telling me to remove my tattoo is like loving me but for yeah. me like what you could do to make me feel loved is like be like oh fucking cool tattoo you want to get rid of it get rid of it you don't you don't like hypothetically speaking just, so we're like, not getting rid of the xqc tattoo is that what you're telling me girl it's <laughs> it's it's almost gone it's it's literally okay, fading. That's, it like, is yeah it is okay like it's it's not that serious and plus like i said i rebranded it it was just a reminder of all the things i've achieved so far it's funny yeah. it's a it's a good part of the lore and it's disappearing and it's not my you know first stupid yeah. tattoo so it's not that big of a deal but yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah like it's just i feel like people think that they're doing what's good for others but they forget to ask what others want so. oh yeah and i'm guilty i'm guilty of it too because we live we're very egotistical too like of course. egocentric it's natural to have a little bit of ego and like you are your reality so it is fair but at the same yeah. time like what makes you a good person is being aware of that and like mm. checking in on people like what would make you feel Interesting. like you know what i'm saying how much responsibility because like i think i struggle with this i always say like everyone is good in their own minds and therefore Mm. people are good and I think that that's hard because I think if I if I judge people through my values like most people would be bad and I don't want to do that I only want to judge myself through my values and then of course I want to like maybe contribute to society in certain ways like maybe like we don't have sex with teenagers when we're Mm. very old you Mm. know what I mean maybe we don't you know, pre- like yeah. prey on the youth in that way. Mm-hmm. But that's that's making a prescription. That's saying I'm going to cast a value judgment on you. Like I think mm-hmm. you're bad if you see yeah. out teenagers, right, it, as an mm-hmm. old person. And I do. Like I do think that makes you bad. But it also makes you mm-hmm. so human. And so I'm like, okay, how do I make peace with that reality? So how do you yeah. judge whether or not someone is really good or bad? Like how do you make – how do you come to terms with it? <clears throat> this is not something I've really introspected on. So give me a moment to kind of like work through it. How do I decide if someone is good or bad? Well, first of all, so for me, I try to view people, I try to separate the person from the act, Mm, right? Like mm -hmm. what they're doing, it's not maybe foundationally who they are. Mm -hmm. Um, I like, for example, like when my kids get mad at me at work, right? Let's like, like, let's say they're having a bad day and like they, they, lash out they scream at me they yell at me they hit me that's it's a fair judgment to say that that's not them like it's them but they're 
they're acting on an emotion, right? Right. And I wouldn't say you are your emotions, mm. but your emotions like are a part of you, if that makes sense. I agree so, with that. Yeah. So for me, I'm really like trying to, I haven't like really thought about it too much, but I'm trying to separate the person from the actions and realize yeah. that they are a human. But ultimately, if you murder someone, that's wrong. Mm. If you hurt an innocent person, that's wrong. Because like innocence is one of the most like valued things in this world, like kids, animals, like there's nothing more pure than a newborn baby. And if you can hurt something pure, Mm. you're evil. Mm -hmm. You're evil. Like that is what, to me, that is what decides whether or not you're good or bad. Mm. Like the stories you hear about like these newborn babies found in trash cans and like Mm. all these like kids being murdered, like everyone can wholeheartedly agree that kids are innocent. And if you can do that, like you're evil. Sorry, you're yeah. there. I don't even like, I don't that's care. That's my soft spot, too. I don't like that's my soft spot, too. Is like, I can yeah. find leniency and be really um, nuanced about most adult actions, mm-hmm. but like, man, when you go for kids, my brain just kind of like, <laughs> yeah, like, why kids, yeah. bro? Like, how? And I, like I said, I have like nine siblings. I feel like I'm the second mom. I have all these nieces and nephews, and I feel like an auntie to the internet. And so I'm just sitting here, like, mm-hmm. don't, not with kids, bro. I get it. Mm-hmm. I know, like, with other adults, I get why people lie and cheat and do all these things, but with children it's like don't leave them out of your Mm. bullshit Mm. leave them out of your bullshit. so okay um with that topic um of leaving kids out of things how do you feel because this is a very controversial topic that i've talked about before and sometimes people don't agree with me which is okay how do you feel about people bringing religion and sexuality Mm. into schools Mm. okay so oh this is this is where people get mad at me because again are you asking me the like citizen are you asking me Brittany, a consciousness (laughs) what you foundationally what you believe in what you operate off okay what you would like true feeling about it to be honest with you i that's the mm, i want people to be free and i want people to make decisions Mm -hmm. they think are is right and i feel like some some communities of religion have been good for people but the Mm -hmm. problem i have is i think i think it does more harm than good to certain kids. And so when you ask me, like, are kids harmed by religion? It's like, yeah, if you're the gay kid, if you're the certain kind of kid, if you're this kid. So part of me is like, don't do it. And another Mm -hmm. part of me is like, do it, but let people be able to do it and get out of it. Mm -hmm. So I struggle with this because again, like I, I can see why certain things work for certain cultures Mm -hmm. and certain people, but they're not going to work for everybody. So again, Mm -hmm. like I even struggle to answer it if I'm being honest, because my instinct is to say, don't do it. Don't raise your mm-hmm. kids religious. Don't raise your kids anything. But the Just dilemma is like, yeah. how, how do you do that? Like, how do you not raise your kids in this thing that you feel like means everything to you? Yeah. So as an educator myself, like, I definitely, I get, like, it can be difficult for me. So <sighs> transgenderism is a very hard thing for me to swallow. Sure. I, I don't agree with it. And people are like, oh, well, you don't have to agree with it. It's not your life. Exactly. It's not mm-hmm. my life. I, I, I believe that everyone has a right to do what they want to do with their own life as long as it doesn't affect me. And when you, and I'm not being hateful, I'm just being very matter of fact about this. Sure. When you get a child and there, and it's been evident by social media stories, mm. whether it's fake news, like let's, let's say like firsthand accounts of the people doing these things, mm. like on TikTok, for example, you have teachers who are like, you're, they're convincing kids sure. that they're transgender. And I, I, I don't think that's a teacher's job, okay? Mm. I don't think that it's right to bring sexuality outside of a scientific standpoint. I don't think it's okay to bring in, like, if you're having a health class where you're learning about reproduction and stuff like that, sure. and that's, that's fine. But leave it strictly mm. scientific. Do not introduce emotions or anything like that into sexuality. Don't talk about, like you know, oh, well, maybe you need to transition or maybe, you know, you're straight, maybe you're this, just be scientific about it because the the idea behind school is to teach them what they need to know, right? Mm. And children do not need to know that they have a choice of whether or not they can be put on hormone, you know, therapy or this or that. Like it's, and it goes for straight people too. Like don't, don't like, like get mad at your kid because they put on a fucking dress at two Mm -hmm, years old. mm -hmm, They're mm -hmm. being a kid. I have a student that walks around my classroom we're an Elsa dress. Do I care? <laughs> yeah, I don't yeah, yeah. care. I don't, I don't encourage it. Like, oh, maybe sure. you're a girl. Maybe. No, you're being a kid. Mm. I used to wear, I used to, you know, do stuff as a kid that was seen as boyish. And I didn't, I'm not transgender. Like it's, it's these kids, every, both sides are sexualizing the kids. Like we just mm. need to, you guys can argue with each other, the LGBTQ, whatever community yeah. and straights. Y'all can argue, but leave the kids alone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Okay, I'll say I'll say like this because I'm really pro LGBT. I will say like I don't consider transness as a part of sexual orientation. I consider it as a relationship to gender. Mm -hmm. So I don't sexualize Mm -hmm. being trans personally Mm -hmm. because I feel like Mm -hmm. those aren't the same thing. Mm -hmm. And I will say like trans kids exist. And I think Mm -hmm. if you're trans as a kid, you need to be taken care of, right? Actually, Mm -hmm. one of the first date questions I ask on a first date is like, what would you do if we had a trans kid? Because that Mm -hmm. will tell me if we're on the same page and caring Mm -hmm. for our child. Because Mm -hmm. neglecting your trans kid is just as bad as like neglecting Mm -hmm. any of your children. Mm -hmm. But I will say sometimes it happens where kids aren't trans and parents Mm -hmm. do push the narrative. Sometimes it happens Mm -hmm. where your kids are gay and parents put the narrative that they're not gay. Like, hello, my borderline. Hello. (laughs) It's like from my parents trying to convince me I was straight and being gay was Mm -hmm. wrong and all that stuff. So my fear is like parents aren't equipped because of culture and religion and and Mm -hmm. beliefs to actually handle reality for what it is. So they Mm -hmm. might make the mistake of assuming their cis kid is trans or assuming their trans kid is cis or assuming their gay Mm -hmm. kid is, you know, so I, I, I can't really fault humans for being human, but I can say that Mm -hmm. I would encourage them to seek out what is true versus Mm -hmm. what is not. Now I would ideally love to send my kid to a school that was like pro LGBT in case they were Mm -hmm. LGBT, right? Mm -hmm. I live in Croatia. It's a Catholic country. They're not here for the Mm -hmm. LGBTs, right? They actually recently made gay marriage like constitutionally legal, which is like Mm -hmm. very weird to be here. But at the same time, everyone minds their business. So I feel a little like I feel safe here. Um, So Mm -hmm. I, Brittany, would love a school That was like very pro LGBT. And at the same time, Mm -hmm. because I think socially, like we do teach kids how to socialize in school and Mm -hmm. LGBT is a part Mm -hmm. of that socialization. Mm -hmm. Um, We actually, I was from a conservative county in California and I was a part of the first group of kids who made a GSA, Gay Straight Alliance, on my campus. Mm -hmm. And I was one of the founders. And that felt really proud for me in the moment when I was closeted Mm -hmm. and my mom saw the picture. I was doing it behind her back. Well, she Mm -hmm. was protesting outside the school for the creation of the club. Her daughter was one of the founders. And so like- that's probably your guys' like karma though like because mm. your your mom not accepting you and if you guys don't solve that in this lifetime mm-hmm. next lifetime is going to be your present so like it's it's weird I, I have a weird dynamic with my mother too mm. you know she I think it's weird because she definitely lived vicariously through me I think ah. because and I say that like when I was a kid there would be times where I remember like I would be going to a birthday party and like she would be putting makeup on me and I was like oh interesting maybe six and like she would get mad because I would move and I'm like I don't want to wear makeup like why are you doing this yeah and I think she like lived through me because she would have me dress certain ways or like look a certain way or want me to you know behave a certain way and it's like I didn't want to be that and then like my mom is the type of person if she has problems with anyone like everyone else has to have problems with that person that's a bummer so that like that made our relationship hard and like with her it always felt like I had to choose her or I didn't love her oh, especially man. when it came into like fights which granted like majority of the time yeah I was gonna choose her because she was on the shit end of the stick but like it always felt like that I always had to pick her mm. I and then like she would do these things where she would like do something like really really mean to me and then like she would make it up like try and make it up to me and like apologize and like smooth things over and when I didn't if I didn't accept like she's like oh well you hate me or you did this to make me feel this way and that's why and it was just like a constant like cycle and like my mom she had problems with her mom mm. my sister has problems with her mom so I think it's like our like ancestral like karmic thing where it's like we really as women in our family need to like learn how to like fix the relationship with our mothers and have a healthy like mother-daughter mm. relationship. So just like having daddy issues, I also would say that I have, you know, oh, mommy issues. Oh, I have hella mommy issues, girl. Yeah. Like, hella, and, much more than daddy issues at this point. <laughs> and I think also, like, that's like, I don't know, like, I find myself, because I have mommy issues, just like with daddy issues, it definitely influences my preferences with, like, partners, right? Mm. So, like, when I, I'm attracted to women as well. I've never, like. I've tried to date women, but they've always like left me for their boyfriends um, sure. and used me. Uh, yeah. So I've never, I've never dated women. I may, I am sexually attracted to women, but I notice like I'm really attracted to like the whole mommy thing. Like if it's sure. like an older blonde woman, like I, it feels, it feels so comforting to like date that person. And I realize like that's literally just me because I never had like a good relationship with my mom and my mom yeah. treated me like so. I, like, I kind of want someone like 
to like protect me because I never had a mom. So it's like, and then same with like men, like my dad, the only dad I knew, the one who did all those things to me, like he was just this terrible person. So then like my male partners yeah. had to be like that. And when they weren't like that, I thought they didn't love me when in reality, they really fucking love me and cared about me. So it's like, it's weird how your mind is shaped as a child Absolutely. and it influences like your future. And I think it's so interesting. I love learning about this stuff. And like when it starts me to too. click and like, Oh, it's like an aha moment. Like when I, when I did my first ever like inner child session, I did like a pros and cons of my dad. This is the pros he did. This is the cons he did. And then my ex-boyfriend, this is what I perceived as a pro. And this is what I perceived as a con. And like I compared the two and everything he didn't do that triggered me that I thought was a con was what my dad did. Right. Oh. And then everything that my dad didn't do is what my partner did do that I did not like. So it's like, it's like this weird aha moment where it's like your parents literally are. I know it's weird to say, but you want to be with your parents. Like You want to be with something be, familiar, right? You want to yeah. be with something that and you I, know. Yeah. And it's like it goes to show like how important it is to have like a good like mo role model growing up. Like you need yeah. to see a healthy married family. Like yes. whatever it may be, whatever it may be for you, for me yes. as a man and a woman, you know what I'm saying? And like I need, I needed to see that. And if I, if I saw that growing up, my life would be completely different, but also yeah. I don't think I would be as strong as I am. I don't think mm. I would be as knowledgeable and wise as I am. Cause everyone, you know, off the internet, they tell me you seem a lot older than you actually are. And that's because mm. I was forced to help raise my brother and sister. Yeah. I was forced to go through abuse. I was forced to be in fight or flight mode all the time and be in survival mode. And I've learned things that help me, you know, in real life situations, like I'm able to like, pick up on energy. I'm able to pick up on like body language. I'm able to yeah. pick up on like things other people don't pick up on. And that is my greatest power. I don't care if it's like a bad thing, if it comes from PTSD, I use it to my advantage. I well, you I have put to, a you yeah. have to learn, and you had to learn the skill to survive. <clears throat> it's like when people say like, you're so mature for your age, you're like, yep, I am traumatized. Mm -hmm. Thank you for noticing. Yep, that's, exactly, <laughs> that's exactly what Thank it is. You. No, I, I agree. Like I have mommy issues. I will say mine is like, um, a relationship with like hyper independence where I was raised to be independent, but also expected mm -hmm. to follow suit. And it was mm -hmm. a really confusing message, like be independent, think for yourself, but do everything we say the way we say we're going to do it because like we believe in God and I need mm -hmm. you not to go to hell and I'm afraid for you. But like the path, you know, the uh, road to hell is paved in good intentions it would be my parents in like a sentence. They mean so well. They're still together 30 plus years together, 10 kids. Like they have a really great marriage. They treat each other with such a dignity. And like they're they're my role model of like, OK, treat your partners with dignity. It's yeah. why I think my marriage will be very successful. And at the same time, the relationship they have with their kids is very difficult because they're Middle Eastern, very opinionated. My mother is – I am turning into my mother. And I am trying to take what mm. my mother couldn't heal from her generational trauma and I'm trying mm. to heal it in this generation. Yeah, It's one yeah. of the reasons why I go back and forth with having my own kids because I always dreamed of being a mom since I was a kid. Yeah. Like I've always wanted it. Um, mm -hmm. getting diagnosed with fibro took like all the remaining spoons I had to think about mm -hmm. raising a child. So now I'm like, fuck, can I even do this? And yeah. a big part of it is that I have a partner that's very open to whatever direction we go into. But the point is like, I look at my mom and I look at what she went through and why she was so afraid for her kids. And she had so many reasons to be a girl. The trauma in my extended family from sexual abuse to just incest mm -hmm. to crazy things was so intense that I think, and we made it look good. We were wealthy and had good jobs and we made it look really good from the outside but when you know what's going on behind closed doors you're just always riddled with this like do i am i healed or do i pretend i'm healed do i am i healthy or am i pretending to be healthy you know what i mean the whole the whole like pre am i pretending to be healed the way i view it and it goes back to like manifestation and stuff like mm. that if you believe it and you live like you are you are so like for me, it's like, even if I think that I'm maybe faking some of my like, like progress, make, it till, make it, it till you make it a little bit. Yeah, kind of not that I am like faking it. But like, there's sometimes where it's like, maybe I'm not actually as healed as I say I am. Mm. But if I'm living that way, if I'm living like I am, I am right? Mm. Like positive thinking just it, show even yeah. scientifically that it yeah. makes a difference. Yeah. You are what you think you are. You are what you pretend to be. Like eventually if you do it so much, that's what you are. Which and is that's different than tricking yourself, right? It's different yeah, than cognitive yeah, dissonance, yeah. right? Okay. Yeah. 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 It's like, like I, I'm not ignoring like by no means, like I'm very aware that there's still stuff I need to work on. Of course. But always. honestly, like I'm, I, I just live in this mindset of like, I am healed. I am getting better. I am these things. And it's like, once you believe that in your head, you live the life that you, you know, mm. you are manifesting, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? So, and 
people are like you're that's gobbledygook you're crazy you're this but it works for me you know if it works for me mm-hmm. they only think it's gobbledygook because i think when they hear it they're like oh cognitive dissonance push all my feelings mm-hmm. down pretend i have nothing mm-hmm. to work on put my head in the mm-hmm. sand and say i'm i'm mm-hmm. independent i make money i'm successful that's all i need it's like no mm-hmm. like you have now i integrated optimism into my life yeah. a few years ago and what that meant was when i had things go wrong when i had like things take a dip it was like okay this is like what is the universe teaching me what tool am i gaining what mm-hmm. am i I looking forward to is this a lesson or is this my life partner like what is what am I gaining what am I mm-hmm. learning from this that's like, like an optimistic way to look at struggle I actually admire so much like my own ancestors my own people who like went through mm-hmm. living under dictatorships in Iraq who had been tortured by governments who had mm-hmm. done so much but they kept their joy bro they were so mm-hmm. peaceful and loving to one another um, minus the crazies but there was yeah. so much like dignity in their suffering that I was like how do I be dignified and during my suffering Right. Mm -hmm. Not just like this practice of like sociopathic stoicism that the Internet thinks Mm -hmm. is stoicism, but this actual Mm -hmm. joyous stoicism, this relationship with my humanity, my life Mm -hmm. and my death. You know, how many times do I need to meditate my own funeral or meditate the funeral of the people I love? And I look to my ancestors and I think, okay, they had such joy Mm -hmm. in the way that they handled struggle. And that should be my joy. That should be my goal. Mm -hmm. And it was optimism. Now, they had God. Mm -hmm. So as a secularist, Mm -hmm. that's kind of difficult. You're dealing with Mm -hmm. different tools because like I do consider myself an atheist or agnostic. You know, Mm -hmm. I understand there could be a God and I don't have a relationship Mm -hmm. with them. Mm -hmm. But that joy in that suffering is a part of that optimism. And I think it's different than telling Mm -hmm. yourself you don't have anything to work on. I'm so great. I have nothing. Like, Don't use your ego to shield yourself. Mm Humble yeah. yourself so you can heal yourself. You know what I mean? My thing is, uh, you brought up religion, and I guess it's something I do ponder a lot, right? Mm. So if people are their reality, like I believe in spirituality, you would say you're agnostic atheist or whatever sure. you or atheist, whatever you define yourself as, and like other people may be Christian, like they can't all be right and they can't all be wrong. Like for me, right. it's like what is the truth? I mm. people say I'm very philosophical. I just want to know what the truth is, right? And maybe that we're is not philosophy. Truth, yeah, but it's but it's like but it's like okay, you have someone who is a Christian, right? right. They live a good life. They're a good Christian where they they literally live like God, live yeah. like Christ, and love others like God did, right? So it's like there's no way that to an Islamic person that person is going to hell because they're simply a Christian, right? Like you know how it doesn't make like it doesn't right. make sense. It's like someone for me who's like, oh, the earth and all this, and I love everybody. And it's like there's no way that I'm going to hell because right. I'm not attributing it to God. And honestly, the way I am, like I, it's not that I don't believe in God because I have a Bible. I grew up Christian. Yeah. So sometimes I still do turn to God or I do think about Him, but it's like. If I don't, like, there's no way, like, someone like me, I mean, sure, like, I could go to hell because I'm a sinner, whatever, but, like, someone who's foundationally a good person, like, there's no way that they're going to hell, right? Like, religion doesn't make, like, nothing makes sense! (laughs) (laughs) It doesn't make sense, like, what is the truth? Like, like, I, and that's why I just prefer spirituality, because, you know, it accepts everyone for who they are, it accepts religion for what it is, and then, like, you tap into the little, you know, conspiracy theory a little bit, and, like, use government, and, like, I truly just believe that everyone is just, like, making the best of the life they have, and, like, at the end, like, there is no good or bad, there just Mm. is the end, and I think, like, you make the most of it, I think, like, the purpose of life is to make the most out of life, and to learn the lessons you're supposed to learn, so it's, like, there's no way that you, if you do learn your lessons, say, I learn all my lessons in this life, and I do what I'm supposed to do, and I'm guided, and I follow the guidance, and I am on my deathbed, and I die, there's no way that nothing, like, I get punished mm. just because I didn't believe in this. Or yeah. this. Like that's, that's what doesn't make sense to me. Yeah. But then again, like Christianity, like true Christianity and correct me if I'm wrong. It's not the idea of the rules you follow, but to just love people. Like accept it's your people, intentions, be right? Kind. Like, yeah. So even in like, Catholicism, they'll have like really mm. strict rules. And my mm-hmm. parents even had this fear of like, if you're gay, you'll go to hell. But mm-hmm. truthfully, if you look at the teachings, only God can judge. And I don't think God's mm-hmm. going to send all the gays to hell. Like mm-hmm. it's the intentionality. It's how much harm over good you've done. And it's all that mm-hmm. stuff. But I will say that I, I think on the macro, like we are all just trying our best. I really believe that. And mm-hmm. on the micro, sometimes your best causes a lot of harm. And then Mm -hmm. we have to deal with the consequences of your best being harmful. Mm -hmm. And then we have Mm -hmm. to talk about that. I think sometimes when people hear me say your best, they think like what – 
what you're capable of in your most ideal. And it's like, no, what you're capable of in the moment, guys. Mm-hmm. In the mo- We're only ever in the moment. There is no future you. There's no living for potential. There's no, I'm going to date him and he's going to get better. There's, who is he now? Who is she now? Well, who are they now? Who am I right now? This Brittany is only capable of so much. And she's capable of pretty, pretty much like amazing things. But it's only what she's capable of. In the future, I can't wait to meet 43-year-old Brittany. She's going to be so cool. Like, I just know she's going to be so much better, like, just well-rounded and thoughtful mm. and compassionate. And she's going to have so many better tools. But I'm, I need to earn that right. Like, I always say I'll die unwise. And I think my life struggle will be, like, earning wisdom, which I might not get in this lifetime. Yeah. And I don't believe in reincarnation. But I like the idea of I'm – on this journey to find this wisdom that I might never attain, but the journey itself of attaining that wisdom will make me a better and a good person and Mm -hmm. a thoughtful person Mm -hmm. because wisdom is like humility at its key, right? It's like, how do I gain this humility? Because girl, I'm so, look at my, look at me. I'm so like, ooh, like I'm just like, you know. Well, to be a streamer, you have, like to be in this field, you have to be very like self-absorbed. You have to think. Like camera and like, you know what I'm saying? You have to think like, like, I have something to say and people should hear me maybe. Yeah, yeah. And like, (laughs) Honestly, like you have people, you get it, you garner community, you, you know, curate a community and, you know, sure it's external validation. It's an echo chamber, but like, that's the point of your own community. Of course, it's going to be people who agree with you because that's your community. Just like, you know, I, a a point I had made was like with Ariadite, like her community is her community. Mine's mine. You're not going to understand mine. Granted, it may be harmful to your community or other people that your community like care about, but to my community, like that's how we think. And granted, it could be a little dangerous, but like the whole point is like everyone has their own thing and Mm -hmm. it is, it comes from a place of being somewhat egotistical or self-absorbed. Let me tell you, girl, everyone on the internet is lying to themselves just a little bit when they're like, (laughs) I have diverse friends. I have friends that hold me accountable, bitch. Tell that to the bridges you burn, bitch. Okay? Like, Like, girl, please. Like, we have people in our life we're willing to hear criticism from if we think they're humanizing us, if we think Mm -hmm. they see us, if we trust Mm -hmm. them to have our back. But Mm -hmm. I'm not going to hear no criticism from somebody that wants me to fail. Like, what good is that energy in my life if I hear it from somebody who's like, I hope she fucking burns, bro. And I'm like, whoa, like, I don't need that. But if somebody who has my back comes to me and says, hey, girl, and then they might be wrong, by the way, people who love us might not see us fully, right? And so it's our job to then know ourselves and say, I I will hear you, but I'll take what you're saying and I'll counter it against these ideas. But like, look, the most of, I don't have not, like, I don't know about you, and no judgment, Mm -hmm. but like, I don't have, like, Nazis as friends because they're yeah. they're so far away from my reality. I'm not sure how to see them, but I yeah. know they're people. I know they're people and I know they went yeah. on a journey. I just don't understand them enough to get it. Mm-hmm. Like I don't have a lot of hardcore racists in my life. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I have people with a lot of prejudice, a lot of bias, and a lot of yeah. like internalized racism. But I don't have like again, I come from a Middle Eastern bubble, so there's a lot of internalized mm-hmm. racism there. Yeah. But I don't have a lot of people that are like literally like tiki torch yeah. racist in my life yeah. so i'm not sure how to deal with those people because there's no part mm-hmm. of me that can relate or humanize them mm-hmm. in like a really wholesome way and mm-hmm. i really it's a reflection of me it's because there's no part of me that's like that so yeah. this idea that the people in our life that we get most along with aren't just reflections of ourselves is like mm-hmm. such a weird idea to me even if they're yeah. diverse some of my friends yeah. are wild and i do not mm-hmm. want to associate their morals with my morals but there mm-hmm. is a part of them that is enough like me that i'm like okay yeah we can vibe what do you think about yeah. that yeah, I, I definitely agree. I think, and this may just be watering it down too much, but like picking and choosing what you want to take from others is like mm. very valid. Like yeah. people are like, oh, you just, you just want to take what fits. You. Yeah. Cause it's my, re- like, it's my reality. It's my community. It's my right. environment. Of course I want to feel safe in my environment. And I think though, when it, the, the moment it becomes problematic is when that isn't an option when it's not a safe space because I don't think safe spaces are everywhere. I don't right, like right now, like I could end the call and be in my safe space because I have that control. Right. Right. But when you get into like a level playing field, when there's others involved, you don't have the right to have safe space. Right. And then people are gonna be like, well, you're, you're hypocritical again. Cause you can't mm-hmm. take, yes, I can. I'm very aware. Right. I'm very like fine with it. Right. Like I'm fine with not people agreeing with me but it's whenever it comes from a place of trying to change my mind that's when the problem arises yeah and I feel like like I said people just are so worried about that but yeah we garner our own experience and we look for safety when we're where we can get it and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that and like you said the people who say like that's a problem they're lying to themselves because Mm. they do it and also it's subconscious it's natural it's instinctual it's like have a preference so like for example pretty privilege exists because like your brain automatically chooses someone who looks attractive like right. that's survival s- tactics right or like people that like have 
same thoughts as you. Like it's it's you want to be with like minded individuals because yeah. that's that's good. Like so I don't know. I just think differently. Yeah, I think what I think this came up because it's election season in the U.S. and like you know Thanksgiving <laughs> gonna be really tense this year. It's already tense, and my family's already bringing it up. We're very politically minded. And it's difficult because already there's like, if you don't vote the way I'm going to vote, you're the reason the country's ending. And I'm like, oh, that's mm. a lot of anxiety, bros. Like, mm. I just feel like ultimately, like, it's we're in a moment of history. It's going to be the way mm. it is. And like, people are going to look back on all of us and think we're all kind of silly. And mm. we're just going to do what we think is best. But like, I can't like disconnect from my conservative family and like condemn them because I know there's a part of me that understands them so fully. Mm -hmm. I mean, I lived with them my whole life. Yeah. I know them so intimately and I see how good of people they are. But I also know that in an ideal world, like I would love to raise my kids in a world where people weren't anti-LGBT. That'd be super mm -hmm. great. Mm -hmm. But I also know that's not the world I would be bringing a kid into. Yeah. So I'm curious because I know hesitating to have a child is a big part of the responsibility of like bringing mm -hmm. a new consciousness into the universe mm -hmm. and telling them like, hey kid, you know this mm -hmm. thing that we call life that's really traumatizing? Welcome. Mm -hmm. Like I'm gonna force you to mm -hmm. do this with us. Do you mm -hmm. wanna have children? I, like I said, don't really wanna focus on the future too much. I sure. know right now I my main goal is to take care of myself. I feel like people mm -hmm. always try to take care of others and like focus on others, with, but yeah. you can't do that unless you focus on yourself. Yeah. So my only goal right now is to be selfish and worry about myself now that like I can do that and I have a clear head and all the rest will fall into place. Yeah, so that's for right. sure. I, I mean, it's sure, but like at the same time, like I know that it's not meant for me right now, yeah. right now in this yeah. moment. No, same, same. It's the same where I'm like, my cutoff for having a biological child is 36 mm -hmm. and then adoption's always open. But I was mm -hmm. like, you know, I'll let like future Brittany make the decision because right now I can't mm -hmm. make it. I know it's coming. I know what eventually mm -hmm. will happen. I'm really good with cutoff dates. I, I put the boundary mm -hmm. on myself. Otherwise, I'll have anxiety until I'm 50. <laughs> what am I doing? You know, do you think that's de detrimental to your journey, though? Like putting mm -hmm. that time limit on? Because like for me, like I said, limiting, limiting beliefs. Like um, if you expect an outcome or are going for an outcome the mm. way you perceive it, you close yourself off to other options or ideas, right? So like if you just say like, this is how I'm going to be in this moment and just do what I know is right in the moment, then like later on say you get what you want, but not in the way you actually thought you needed it or the for way sure. you actually wanted it. Because yes. maybe it presented itself in the way you needed it, the way you deserved it, the way it should have been. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So it's like... So like when you say like, oh, I've got these timelines or like these, like, I think you're limiting yourself and I don't mm. want you to do that, but you're, you're free to make your decisions. I, just, I think, the, I, I think you're right. You know? I think that there are, when you use this, like I call it a tool, you're either going to limit yourself from actually doing the right thing or because I know that I'm open to the future Bernie making a different decision. It does not a mm. real timeline yeah <laughs> it's only real gotcha. to this britney but if i gotcha. turn 36 and i have a conversation with my husband i'm like you know we're gonna extend this <laughs> we're gonna yeah. extend this time well, like you're he will do it with it. me we're meant to extend yeah. it but for now to comfort my anxiety i have to tell myself like hey don't even worry about this until you're 36 because that's our yeah. our ideal cutoff time but we also are open to our future self saying actually our ideal cutoff time is now 38 and it's actually 40. Mm -hmm. It's actually 42. Mm -hmm. I just mm -hmm. need the like verbalization of like, you're allowed to make this decision either yeah. way. So yes, I think you're right that for some people they're like, oh my God, I'm 36. And I told myself I have to do it mm -hmm. by 36, but I don't want to anymore. And now I have to, because I said I would. And I'm like, T -t 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 -t. Mm -hmm. you're not your past self. You're your current mm -hmm. self. And if your current yeah. self wants to make a different decision, make a different decision. Mm -hmm. But I think you're right that 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 could be a trap for some people. Yeah. Even in my past self. Yeah. <sighs> I don't know. It's just, I have all these ideas and thoughts. Yeah. It's just like, I, it's like, I'm glad that I've had this like awakening and this change, but also it only brings more questions and more ponder. Cause I'm a very like Beautiful. pondering person. I love to ponder. Yeah. Like, same. Hmm. May it never <laughs> end. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, and it's like, I put it, I think it's worth it though. I think totally. It's worth it this is as sure as I've ever felt about myself. And it just, it well, how could you right. not be sure girl, as you seek out more information, it's like, it's like learning yeah. to care for your hair. It was a pain yeah. when I didn't know how. And the more information I gained, the more yeah. I asked why and how. Yeah. Easy peasy, lemon Growth. squeezy. Growth and learning. Growth and yes. learning. No, I think so. Now, I'm going to check in with you about your energy levels. We've been talking for a bit here. How mm -hmm. are you feeling? Uh, I feel good. I love talking. Like, I talk a lot. It's just finding people that are willing to listen. And, like, yeah. I don't know. It, that's why I told you I was very apprehensive being yeah. because like the whole situation left a bad taste in my mouth. And like I had actually made a tweet like, oh, I'm stepping away from all this shit. And here I am again. But it's like I like it. But sometimes I feel like people get too caught up in like the debate side. Like they're not like yeah. actually seeing people and like it's not that serious. 
it's it's yeah. honestly not that serious like everyone gets so like emotional and angry and that's fine like those are normal emotions but it's like sometimes it's not worth it you're wasting energy on something that isn't meant for you you know what i'm yeah. saying so it's like i took that step away you know i've been doing my own thing and like i actually like i enjoyed what you had to say about me and i felt like it was a like this would be a fair opportunity for me because also the way i operate too is it's hard for me to have in the moment conversations because it takes me a while to like actually think about like how I feel so it's like to give like answers immediately right there it's hard for me and sometimes like I may say something I don't necessarily mean or like later on when I finally digest the conversation and watch it back I'm able to like say like oh I wish I would have said this instead or Mm -hmm. I wish I would have added this onto it and that's why I feel like I I had this was like an opportunity to do that because there were a lot of things that I wanted to rebuttal or I had time to digest that I wanted to address and it's like this was a way to do so and I feel like you know I it's not that I'm being a yes person, but like, I am open to like so many people and, you know, I'm learning like kind of to control that a little bit more. Like I, I was a big part of my fear was people saying like, Oh, you don't want to talk to that person because you're scared. Yeah. So like it forced me to do things that I didn't want to do simply because I was worried that people thought I was scared. Yeah. But once I started realizing that there were other people that, that were out there that thought like me and like actually understood where I was coming from and actually was giving me like a fair fighting chance, like, yeah, of course I'm going to do this. So yeah, you know, and I want you, I'm learning. I want you to think of I. This is how I think of my discussions. I think of them as like a living entity that will change mm-hmm. in the future and will mold. And the next mm-hmm. time you talk to me, hopefully you're like, mm-hmm. "Hey, I've been really thinking about this." I'm like, "Shut up, let's brainstorm." And like, we'll brainstorm yeah. and we'll think about mm-hmm. it. But I don't want to think of this as like a, oh, like what's the conclusion of this conversation? There is no yeah. conclusion. It's yeah, ongoing. it's just, Yeah, yeah, exactly. I. And I think that takes a lot of pressure off because that was like my, like I said, my biggest trigger. Like you're sitting here, like with the goal of changing my mind, you're not really hearing me. Like, like, and that's, and then in turn, I get aggravated. I get stressed out. I get like overstimulated. And it's like, I need to have that, like, I need to get it all out. And it's just, it's, it's negative. And so I don't know. And you're being judged. You are being, you're being judged. And then they're pitting you up against someone and someone's a winner and someone's a loser. Yeah. And there's like so much un like unness. And then I'm sorry, I don't know if you meant this earlier, but I genuinely am not in like a belief that what I am mm-hmm. doing on the internet will ever be remembered, that people will not care about me. I'm helping the people I can help mm-hmm. now in this moment. Yeah. But like our 200 person streams, even our 50,000 person streams, like guys, mm-hmm. nobody's got the, okay. Like we're taking ourselves way too seriously for a bunch of YouTubers. That's, that's why I said, like, I think like if people focused more on themselves, right. it would be easier to change because totally. like, that's what Always. you can control. You can't control other people. And when Ariadite said like, oh, well, you're not doing what you're doing to change people. I'm not. I'm showing them that change is possible. If they I'm want inviting it. them, Yeah, I'm, invi- I'm inviting them on my journey. I'm right. allowing them to see a real raw human life right in front of them. Like, right. I, there's nothing really I don't share. Like I, I want them to see everything because I want them to know that I am a human and it's interesting. It's like interesting to see yeah. humans live their life because it's like Sonder, right? You always wonder what someone else is going through. You always wonder yeah. like what they've done today. What, and I, I truly like, it's just, this is no. home to me. Like, because I, you know what I'm saying? Like, I have a ocean view and I was sitting by the, you know, on my, by my window today and I was looking at all these sailboats I'm like bro there's like literally just people enjoying their time on the ocean right now well I'm creepily watching them from this window but like we're all just doing our own life and we're all just like figuring it out and we're all Mm -hmm. just like in our little moments and Mm -hmm. I think I really just want to respect that people are in their moments and on their journey Mm -hmm. and even though I might disapprove of the way they're harming other people I need them to know like you are not always going to be this person and you have the right to change but you have to want it you really have it has to come from you I don't want to feel pressured I don't want you to fake your change yeah. I don't want you to say the right things to my face, but behind closed yeah. doors, you're deceiving yeah. yourself and yeah. me. Like, yeah. and asking people to change is a very big request. It's huge. Yeah. It is a very, uh, honestly, it's super narcissistic to be like, mm-hmm. you need to change for me. It's like, sir. Yeah. Sir. Yeah. Like, well, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make it drink. Like, you can tell me, like, this is what you need to do. Like, I can have a conversation like I did with that one individual who was going through the same thing I was going through. I told them everything they needed to know. Like, mm. that was true. That was fact. Like, I, I don't want to, like, diagnose this person, right. but, like, it was scary how similar. Like, I literally mm. saw myself as that person. So it's like, maybe you need to go just talk to someone. Like, right. take a break from the internet. Do this. And, like, I was giving all the, like, good advice, which she didn't have to accept it. And she, right. I don't think she did. And, you know, I did my part. Right. I'm there for that person on a human level. But my growth, my healing is more important. And I have to absolutely right now, no so, 1000%, so. which is why a lot of people don't understand why I can look at people I'm like, Oh, look at that journey. That's messy. And everyone's yeah. like, say something. And I was like, Yeah, I'll say something when I like in an appropriate way. But also yeah. like, 
they like mm-hmm. again i don't know anything that we don't already know if you've been in any philosophy circles any political circles it, like the world tells you all the day drink enough water and sleep and we still don't do it girls we know what mm-hmm. to do yeah but whether or not we do it is people on us them. It's on exactly. us. So like I'm not doing exactly. – like even with my marriage, like people are always so cynical about it, which is so ironic because I'm like, isn't this the goal? Wasn't our whole journey of getting into a healthy relationship finding it? But they mm-hmm. doubt I find it because they don't understand how much change I had to do to be healthy enough mm-hmm. to attract mm-hmm. a healthy partner. They don't yeah. understand that it had to do with me. Yeah. I had to be the one to change. So I would stop saying yes to dysfunction and I would say yes to a functional yes. relationship. Like yes. it had nothing to do with him. Like he's great, yeah. but I had to be the one that would match with yeah. him. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? It had to be me. Yeah. And people don't understand, like, you're in toxic relationships because, bro, you're toxic still. <laughs> like, yeah. I don't know what to yeah. tell you. Yeah. But yeah. I get it. People, like, you know, it's and a it's denial always, thing. It's a part of the journey. I think people, there's certain words that trigger people, like, like toxic or, mm. like, you know, BPD or, like, certain things yeah, just yeah, trigger yeah. people. And it, it doesn't always have to be a negative thing. For sure. It's okay. It's, when I say this, don't take it for the literal meaning. It's okay to be toxic, right? Mm. You're learning, like, you're learning that you are toxic. You yes. are learning that it's not healthy. Yes. Like if you weren't called toxic, you wouldn't know that you're toxic. And right. it, you know, it's something to work on. So like, yeah. yes, it's a bad thing, but like you get what I mean by when it's yeah. not like a, like a bad no, thing. No, it's a like, part of the journey, bro. We've all been yeah. there. I'm literally trying to tell people I have been there. Yeah. I'm not condemning you for it. I'm telling yeah. you when you're ready, you can change, yeah. yes. but you can't sit there and say, well, Brittany doesn't know she, she's in this healthy relationship. I'm like, do you think I, do you know what I've had to do? do you know how, to yeah. Do you like know this? what I've had to do? And that's the thing is like, I'm trying to tell people I'm trying to be, I've been on the internet 12 years, kids. Like I show you my old videos for mm-hmm. a reason. So you can be like, this used mm-hmm. to be me. This used to be mm-hmm. me. This used to be me. And now I'm this one. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to be a different version of myself, but there's always a core you. And that core you, when Mm -hmm. healthy, is facilitating, like, your joy. And for me, Mm -hmm. like, I feel like I know what my joy is. I feel like I know what I'm doing here, and I accept it. But it's, again, living in the moment, on the journey, Mm -hmm. accepting you will be toxic, accepting, like, even now, if I exhibit Mm -hmm. any toxicity, it's my job to say, oh, my bad. Mm -hmm. My bad. Mine. My Mm -hmm. bad. Not, Mm -hmm. well, he and she and, oh, they and Mm -hmm. my bad. Mm Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know yeah I, I I definitely agree and I think that I don't know I, d- I don't want to sound like I'm like inflating myself or being like like narcissistic but like the way I treat my, girl. <laughs> my I, the emotion. way I treat my online uh <laughs> presence I yeah. it, to me it's somewhat like of an I think it's a very artistic thing like I think it's yeah. like an art installation you see someone growing you get to mm-hmm. watch someone grow like you it's like when you see like a childhood star you grow up with them right yeah like every one of my viewers gets to see my daily life the challenges I face what I'm changing like and even they'll pick up on it they'll notice subtle differences and that's what the goal of streaming is for me I guess if I had to pick yeah. an ultimate goal it's just to let people watch someone's life through a camera yeah to see like how someone changes and to show that you change as a person and you grow and you know maybe one time you think one way maybe one time you think this way and you may be contradicting of yourself but ultimately your consequences are your consequences your journey is your journey your change is your change and that's all it is you can you can choose to watch and consume it or you can just not watch and you know my favorite comments I get from people are like oh my gosh Brittany I used to watch you 10 years ago and I was just checking in to see how you've been it's so cool to see like where you're at now and I do that too I check in with youtubers I'm like oh I wonder where so and so Mm -hmm. is Mm -hmm. and then I see where they are they are in their journey and I'm like even though I don't Mm -hmm. consume you every day like the Mm -hmm. the consciousness that they are is enough Mm -hmm. in my memory that I'm like oh I wonder what this Mm -hmm. human decided to do with their life you know what I mean so I just think that's like a great like I don't know how long I'll be able to have access to you in this way Mm -hmm. but man in 20 years if I like one day go like wait a second who's that girl I used to talk to? Yeah. And then She's I go on the, the internet. She's wearing the XQC now. <laughs> Stop, girl. Look at you manifesting. <laughs> Run away, Felix. Don't. I, mani- I manifested a phone call. So Stop. We'll that's true, honestly. Hey, that's pretty – actually, can I be honest with you? Not that I'm like mm-hmm. a full manifesting like believer, but mm-hmm. I will say everyone I've ever wanted to talk to in life, like, it happens eventually. Like I've, yeah. I'm so if like I've been so you, rewarded. Yeah, I think I've been so rewarded throughout my life. Like the most random celebrities or people, and I'm just like, cool. Like, cool. That's why I don't worry about it. Because mm-hmm. you're right. Like mm-hmm. I have this. Like, eh, it will happen if it happens, and if yeah. it, you know, whatever. Yeah, and yeah. people are drawn to that energy. It's like the whole yeah. I don't chase, I attract. For so sure. when you like when you behave a certain way and you truly act like you don't, people like that for some reason. So it's like, well, because it's also not creepy and it's also not like yeah. weird and it's also yeah. a sign yeah. that like I'm not here to ruin your life, my bro. Yeah. It's just, I'm it's here. Good, it's a good signal, you know. It's I'm good here signal. to fuck shit up. And, you know, <laughs> I'm just here. I'm just here. But yeah, that's yeah. Uh, that's the majority of it. And like, I, I just want to say, like, 
people's judgment of me is very valid. I understand. I I wholeheartedly, yeah. from the bottom of my, I un, I understand. But you cannot get upset when I choose not to allow that, like, mm. to affect me, like, not to listen to people. Because, like, it's my decision. And while your opinions are valid, like, you can't get mad when I don't want to accept them. And yeah. I feel like people are, like, you know, so caught up on how they feel about me. But in reality, you know, I don't, like I said, I don't think they actually hate me. They hate what I do. It's and people, never about you, bro. Yeah, people mix that up. And I think we really need to focus and, you know, become more mature in realizing that we hate what people do, not the person. Like, you can very well not like my actions, but to say you hate me or you don't like me, you don't know me. You don't like my actions. Just like if you were to do something, I I don't like what you did. I don't, it's, I I like you. I don't like what you did. So people, I, I think people forget that. But then again, you know, it is the internet and people don't, sometimes aren't that deep with it they're just yeah. surface level they hate you they hate your content and they'll let you know but yeah i feel like we need to focus more on like the true source of our disdain for people yeah so. no i think you learn that too in therapy or you learn that and you've mm-hmm. been like like i always say i try to reach out to people i see them making content about me if i feel like oh they're like really critical of me i was like mm-hmm. let me just talk to them and then usually it's okay because most of the time you're right i don't think we hate the core of people or the consciousness i think we're upset with what people do and that is fair because like mm-hmm. sometimes i do things that are upsetting let's talk about it and also even if we talk about it and we feel like we're vibing it doesn't mean either of us are going to change like i remember yeah. one time on the internet um people were trying to give me advice about how i should mm-hmm. change my behavior and i said um i they're like if you want to be in this space with us i was like cool when i'm in this space i'll like adapt but when i'm out of your space like i i'm not going to do that right so if i'm yeah. like, on my own channel which is my safe yeah. space like yeah. my community yeah. my people i want to har- i want to bring in people like me yeah but if i yeah. took that like that bubble thought and brought it into my bubble my bubble would then transform to a place where even i didn't want to be full time yeah because i like yeah. to visit i love visiting people's homes yeah. and visiting the yeah. different yeah. bubbles yeah. and exactly. cultures exactly but girl i don't want to live there that's the thing. Like, people always, like, labeled me as an orbiter, right? Yeah. The way I view it, I am a alien and a UFO visiting other planets because I'm trying <laughs> to find what I like yeah, most. And yeah. while I'm doing it, I'm I'm getting other little aliens to yes, join me. And ultimately, absolutely. when we find our home planet, yes. that's where we'll be. Yeah. And we will be happy. And I will have taken, granted, I am grateful for every single connection that I've had on the of internet, course. every experience, because of course. Th- those people that did bring me out, they did not have to do that. And I'm grateful yeah. for that. True, true, true. But respectfully, I want to do my own thing. I'm yeah. learning. I'm trying to figure out what works for me. And just because I'm not associating with that person or not on that person's you know, content anywhere, doesn't mean the bridge is burned. It right. just means I don't want to be a part of that. I yes. I, I had it. I experienced Good it. Good for you, girl. I'm girly. doing my own thing. And people are like, oh, well, you know, th- this is your community. Yeah, I'm aware. But they stayed for a reason. I'm making the most of what someone else gave to me. And yeah. I'm grateful. I won't ever, like, be ungrateful for it because that goes against my belief system. But, like, yeah, it's it just people want to make things, um, you know, a molehill. So it's, yeah. 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 No, good for you. I think that's like a really powerful stance to have. And I think a lot of people, um, I will say like the orbiter concept is mm-hmm. nothing I've ever experienced online until recently with like the specific mm-hmm. community that uses that word. I've mm-hmm. never had that happen with any other bigger, bigger YouTubers with millions mm-hmm. of subscribers. Mm-hmm. I've never been called an orbiter in my life. And even in that mm-hmm. community, I wasn't considered one because I have my own mm-hmm. audience. But mm-hmm. when people do like use that word, I'm like, do you know you're the only community that says this? I've never, and that's I've that's never like- seen it. And they're like, don't you know this person or don't you know? Dude, I've been here for like less than a month. I don't know these people, you know, it is what it is. You can call me an orbiter, but me, I don't like, I don't subscribe to that. Like, It it really sucks though. There's so many YouTubers I know who don't want to associate anymore because they're like, hey, it's really creepy the way you guys like frame this association. It it is. And like, they need to work on that. And I think they could if they wanted to, Mm -hmm. but it -hmm. starts at the top, right? So it is what it is. (laughs) It is what it is. All right, girly. I think this is about it. I need to pee so fucking bad. And I'm going to grab a snack and I'll come back and do the rest of my stream. Um, is there right. anything else you want to say to my audience or tell them about yourself or where to find you or any of that? Uh, first of all, thank you for having me on. I yeah. enjoyed the conversation. Thank I think you. It was really productive. Uh, thank you for giving me a chance. Uh, you can find me on Kick, Merc Off the Perk, really easy. Um, yeah, I guess just... Do what feels right to you. And if somebody's hating, well, you're doing something right, I guess. So, yeah. Yeah. That's and harm reduce. Fun. And that's it. Yeah. Yes. Yes. That's the key. Uh, yes. Yes. So, yeah. All right, girly. Go. Good talk. Hit All me right. up anytime, literally. Just okay. message me on Discord. All right. Talk to All you right. soon. Bye. Bye. Bye.
my head in Miller Fallen bed. My belly's being fed, and I'm okay. I'm just fine, yet all I do is whine. Not to you in my mind, cause I know I don't make sense. I've been nothing but blessed. So why's my life a mess? Please tell me, cause I'm sick of thinking. Yeah, I'm sick of reaching out for the truth And living life as a fool Dun, 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 d